Welcome back to the PlayStation Collectors Podcast. This is season number three, episode 29. And tonight we welcome Hot Dogs at Disney. Welcome, Jen. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for having me. I've been looking forward to this one. I uh, appreciate any ta- any chance I get to talk Disney, but also video games, which is something I don't get to do very often. So appreciate you having me in. Hey, thanks for coming on, man. And um, I'm sure everyone who's listening right now is like, what's Hot Dogs at Disney mean? So- Can you please tell us what you do on Instagram? Because it's really cool. (laughs) I guess it's cool. It's cool to, uh, it's cooler than I ever thought it would be, uh, I suppose. Um, So, what I do is, so I wind it back a few years. I got an annual pass for my birthday one year uh, to Disney in Orlando. And I went a few times and realized like I should probably start documenting it somehow, like taking photos of it something like that. And uh, it popped, I, I can't even explain it. It just randomly popped in my head. Well, I'll take photos of hot dogs on rides and uh, post them on Instagram and it'll make my friends laugh, you know, like make my family laugh and all that. And it did that. Uh, and so I just started taking more photos of hot dogs on like the teacups on the people mover <laughs> on roller coasters and all sorts of stuff. And it just kind of caught on. And I had actually had no idea that there was like this giant Disney community on Instagram of like um, influencers and all that kind of stuff that like create all oh, this yeah. content. Oh, Disney's I, a, its own <laughs> thing, its own category on YouTube. Yeah. People covered yeah. in Disney and like, oh yeah, it's a huge thing. Yeah. Seriously. It's, it's this gigantic bucket. It's like, you know, you put it up there with people who do like makeup channels or like, you know, whatever video game channels or whatever. Um, and then there's this. There's theme park channels too, and they kind of cross over. It would do Disney, and then there's like just Disney, and then there's like there's also yeah, it's pretty it's pretty interesting. Yeah, and Disney food and all that kind of stuff. The hardcore people and yeah, yeah. So I had no idea what I was getting myself into, but that community just sort of like embraced me because this weirdo from (laughs) we like this hot dog guy. I like this (laughs) guy, (laughs) and and I just started doing my own thing, and I wasn't trying to be a part of it. I didn't even know it existed, and uh, yeah, so I just kind of started become friends with people, and it got it caught on and all that, and uh, yeah, it sort of turned into what it's turned into. I got I hit ten thousand followers sometime last year, into last year. Uh, so to go from like 10 people following me, like friends and family to 10,000 is pretty, uh, pretty cool. And, to, yeah, just to think that there's that many people out there to like kind of get the joke, um, uh, g- gives me hope for, for society a little bit. <laughs> I really enjoy scrolling through, through your page. It gave me a lot of laughs and no, it was really cool. And you guys should definitely check it out. So Yeah. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. And we're going to be talking about Disney games today. You're obviously a massive Disney fan as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh, interesting. Is I've, I've been playing Disney games since they first started. I think um, I think the first Disney game ever was the Black Cauldron, which was on like the Apple II or something like that. Maybe it was on oh, the man. Amiga. Or way I back. Have to uh, play that. Yeah, I maybe. love this movie, man. So I didn't know, and I love eight bit Atari and computer stuff and Commodore and all that stuff. So. 
that sounds like something I should take a look into. Yeah, yeah. I never actually played that, but I started, yeah, I was aware of it. I was a little too young for that, but then the NES era, like that was like my childhood. And of course, uh, we, games. yeah, we had DuckTales and then there was Chippendale Rescue Rangers and uh, Tailspin was good, Darkwing Duck. And you had all these games that weren't just like good Disney games. They were like classics, you know, they're, they're still up there to this day is like, like, you know, DuckTales is like as good as Mario almost. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's like top tier NES games. And, yeah, but I can uh, then... beat Mario. Uh, DuckTales <laughs> on the NES is brutal. I was playing it. I literally <laughs> was playing that early this week. And like, I think I played for like 20 minutes. I'm like, I haven't beat a single level. Yeah. I'm just, yeah. I just, I just <laughs> been dying. <laughs> 20, 20, 30 minutes. I haven't beat a single thing. Good you know stuff. what I realized about those old Capcom games uh, is you have to treat every single enemy like it's a boss. So it could just be like, you know, your regular standard enemy that you, you run into through a level and you have to take Including each one uh, seriously. Pits. You have to jump. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> just jumping in those damn old games. Is I like... find though in those games, once you play it, it's um, like the movements will be the same with the enemies and things like that. So you can learn and, you know, mm-hmm. oh, hang on, I have to be smart against this guy because I'll die if I've just run in and you eventually like work out how to do the levels and things like that. Right. Right. And that's what's kind of f- interesting about when we hit the PlayStation era. So, you know, we start out with the NES platformers, the Genesis and super Nintendo was a lot of platformers like Aladdin and you had Lion King and jungle book was on there. That was real good. And then we hit the PlayStation and those 2d like platformers, like everyone was trying not to do those anymore like those early PlayStation games, like everyone was trying to switch to 3D and all that. So we kind of, the Disney games stopped, like the genre that they were really, really good at, like only kind of lasted into the first couple of years of the PlayStation. And then, so like Disney games is like a thing, really like sort of transformed and evolved once we hit the uh, the PlayStation era. I think um, Hercules is a really good game Mm -hmm. to use an example for that, because I wouldn't call that 3D, I'd call it like, 2.5D. Yeah. And it uses 2D and then it kind of turns into 3D and then it goes back to the 2D. I'm glad you mentioned that. I've uh, actually, is it time to start like showing off like yeah, collection yeah, yeah, stuff? Of so that's top of my pile is Hercules. So I think this is the first PlayStation game, a Disney PlayStation game. The very first uh, Disney game that was on a PlayStation console. Came out with a banger. Yeah, and it is phenomenal. It is like, it's a continuation of that uh, side-scrolling uh, thing that they did so well on the 8-bit and 16-bit era games. Uh, but the art is beautiful. The sound is great. The animation's really good. Like, it's a really creative, inventive game. And I would say, you know, what's funny is going through the stack of games that we're going to go through today. You know, there aren't a lot that are, like, worth money or, like, you know, maybe, like... Not now. Who knows? High no. watermarks. Yeah. Uh, I just feel like the... down the line, even cheap PlayStation 1 games will be worth more money than... than I think people, so, too. Uh, yeah. Like, I think, like, even, like, racing games that are cheap now, I think mm-hmm. those are going to be expensive down the line. Even though there's lots of them. Yeah. Those are good games. Like, any games that are fun to play will, will increase in value. If the game's garbage, it won't. Ever. yeah and i think this is the uh, hercules is the one example i think on the pile that i have of that's uh maintained its value i think this is going anywhere between 40 and 50 bucks uh for this one so it's not like dirt cheap that's, or anything like that and you don't see it yeah you don't see it everywhere um but it's you know i you guys might run into this i have a hard time like telling people to go get games that are like oh that's cool or interesting or you, ch- you should check that out Cause it's like, you're still spending money and I have a hard time vouching for stuff. That's like, you know, going to be hard to find, or you have to track down or spend more than like 10 bucks on, I would say this thing, Hercules is a hundred percent worth the money. Like this is something I can recommend that people check out and, uh, uh, seek out without like no reservations on that. Like this is just a legit great game. Um, I can't and speak if, for the North American copy, but the PAL version, we have a platinum version over here that you can find for ten dollars. Yeah. But if you want the black label, you're looking at a forty dollar game. So you can pick it up to play chief. And I had my childhood copy, which unfortunately was the platinum version. So I mm-hmm. had to reach out and find the black label. And it, it generally took me like two years to find the good condition complete. 
Toffee of Hercules for a reasonable amount. And it was one of those games that I had it when I was a kid and, you know, you mm -hmm. start collecting, you go and rebuy your childhood. But yeah, it's definitely a game that if you're after it, keep your eyes out for it because it's not one that just shows up all the time. Yeah, I, I rarely run across it. And it's not like it, I wouldn't say it's super rare or anything. It's not like a, you know, Panzer Dragoon saga or like some, like, you know, Holy Grail. But you just don't see it too often. And uh, I don't think we ever got a Greatest Hits version of it over here. Yeah, so that might be part of the reason why. It's all better in the PAL region. <laughs> yeah, I guess too. One thing uh, about Hercules, though, and a lot of these PS1 uh, games is uh, they're on the PS uh, Vita store still. So you can get Hercules, I think five bucks or something uh on the vita which is makes it an easy way to play like a really cool classic game hey one thing i wanted to add about hercules and you might agree with this is um it was one of those games that unfortunately had the whole it was rushed at the end of it the first mm -hmm. like five or six chapters of that game absolutely amazing and then it's just like four boss fights in a row and then the game ends yeah yeah funny you say that because it's sort of like disney movies in general like they're good about two-thirds of the way through the movie and then the ending is never all that great so uh i guess it's that's that's same like 90 with the games. of all movies so. <laughs> right. the hardest good endings are the hardest yep thing. So, that's why if you have a good ending like the sixth sense or something you can mm -hmm. like make the whole movie who cares it's all about that ending <laughs> it's like oh that you know saw the end of saw one you know what i mean Right, and right. If you have a good ending, it is it is amazing. But ninety percent of the time, it's like, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> right, right. Anticlimactic. That's how I think. I feel like most. Of the yeah, time. I agree you're with expect, that. I, you're expecting more, and then you're like, oh, that's all. He just. Some with these no. uh, Disney game or Disney movies too, where they're so high concept. Like you got this great idea, and then it just they have a really good idea, and then it just really peters out really fast. Like it, there's not much more to a lot of these things than just a great idea. Uh, like they and then you got Kingdom movie. Hearts, which has got more ideas than you can even yeah. like, have them. <laughs> I know. Just, can you just explain that story to me real quick? <laughs> the no, Kingdom Hearts story. <laughs> it's yeah. funny. It's uh, I was looking through my <laughs> Kingdom Hearts collection, and it's like a stack this big. So I just grabbed uh, the copy of uh, this PS4 one that has the everything. Story so on far, it. such yeah, a good yeah. completion that one. Um, there's like a, there's like a all in one package thing or something too isn't there like something else too yeah this is the Another... one yeah that's the one it's yeah so it's got okay. kingdom hearts final mix uh rechain of memories kingdom hearts 2 birth by sleep it's i mean all the uh okay, all all the, everything from 2.8 and back right and then kingdom hearts yeah. 3 is the... oh i should pick that up if that's all if there's no downloads and that's all on the disc i'd, I'd grab that yeah, Sounds it's all like on the disc. It's still oh, pretty cheap too. I think it's like twenty bucks, so it's not. Um, it's oh, an yeah. easy way to get everything. We are we're in the, the the blessed PS4 times, my friends. Like if you like <laughs> buying PS4 games right now, it is the glory days. Everything's twenty bucks, fifteen bucks clearance, you know, thirty bucks. But or it's also horrible, like because there's a lot of stuff that's actually kind of disappearing. So there are some things that are getting harder to find and getting expensive, but. There's like so many cheap games you can buy right now. I love it. Yeah, yeah, it's a really good time. I would like to assume that that story so far is going to be one of those things in the future that is the one piece that people go for and will creep up in price. I, yeah. I assumed it a long time ago, and I'm surprised it's still so cheap. Me too. And it, it, the thing is that, you know, like I said at the beginning, there are not a lot of like triple A, like, amazing amazing like must have disney games but i would say this i mean kingdom hearts one and two and and three um i mean it's the best disney game in since the playstation started so in like almost 30 years of disney games it's still you know those three games are you could not play anything else and be totally fine uh just playing those kingdom hearts games um they're, yeah, they're well, you don't just get one game you get every world and all the different yeah. stories and yeah, because it mixes. That blew my mind. It was like, oh, this movie I love, and then you go into the next one. There's no no spoilers when you're a kid, and there's no internet. But yeah, it's just so amazing. And then the second one came out, and they got to do it all over again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The second one might be the best uh, out of all of them. Uh, you know, one is great in its own way, and three is really good. But two is like the sweet spot of like 
you know, like it's classic, but like super innovative and fix some things from one and, and all that. And uh, yeah, so I would, I would say two is like the height of that series uh, for sure. That's what I, I heard. actually didn't finish three. I just found it was really grinding and it wasn't the experience that I had as mm -hmm. a kid. I don't know. I went into it thinking that I was going to be nostalgic the whole time and just love it. But I played it for like 20 hours and I kept trying to replay it and I just, couldn't get into it to finish it. Yeah, yeah, I kind of had a similar experience with three. It was like I was so happy to have it, and it was great, and I was excited, but it dropped off really fast. Like, so my enthusiasm for it waned pretty quick. And maybe that's because I'm adult now, and I can afford to have more than one game. Like, if it was my yeah. only game, <laughs> like when I was a kid, I would have played it to death. But it was just sort of, you know, I sort of like you said, grindy and kind of samey. So it was sort of, uh, you know, it was almost like a sequel to a, a movie series that you like that sort of does everything right, but you're sort of like, well, I could just watch the old ones or play the old ones. Yeah, you're playing it for the characters, not for the video game and things. Yeah, 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 good point there. But and it uh, is funny how there's a huge perspective change, like when you're younger and you have games and you want them to last forever because you just, like, had nothing else to play. And mm -hmm. now you're, like, it's like you're older and you're like... Oh, okay, okay, game. This is great and all, but you know, <laughs> I can't just play this one thing. Like that's how I feel about Final Fantasy Rebirth right now. I'm like, uh -huh. I'm ready for it to be over. I like it very much, but I've been trying to do like everything, and I'm like, okay, enough. No more. <laughs> it's like <laughs> no more quests. Pop up, please. Like, let me just stop. <laughs> that's an attention span thing too, or like you know, just a time management thing. Like when you get older, you know, because you're you're obviously dealing with work and like you know house stuff and all these other commitments you didn't have as a kid but then you have that too with now you're competing with the internet and uh you know streaming services and all this stuff it's like you really have to be pretty dedicated to be a gamer these days almost mm -hmm. and keep up with stuff because everything's fighting for your attention and it's like you know you can watch and uh, play and do anything basically any time of day and so how do you wrap your head around making a choice and then sticking with it you know i think it it puts a lot of responsibility on on games to be good enough to make you obsessed with them uh so it, you know mm -hmm. the, the the good stuff really uh stands out if it if it can hold your attention despite all the other noise uh out there yeah you, you make a really good point there i've just started playing a new game this week called room world and um it i watched my friend stream it but my friends played it for two and a half thousand hours so watching him play it looks amazing <laughs> It's a fun game, but it's got an incredibly steep learning curve. And now mm -hmm. I'm at the point now where it's generally hard and I'm having fun, but I'm getting destroyed. And I'm like, do I want to invest the time to actually learn this or do I just move on to something else? Mm -hmm. One of those things. Yeah. And it's like, does it, uh, your priorities change in terms of the value too? Like, is it worth it? Is it worth me getting good at this? Uh, too, yeah. like what's the payoff mm -hmm. and everything, and sort of what you're looking for in a game changes uh, too. Um, Another big thing I think too is like when you're, I mean, I, if you're older and you're in a relationship, you have a significant mm -hmm. other, or you have kids or something like that. It's pretty hard to get them to want to watch you play games. So <laughs> right. I mean, it, it's you can. It's not. It's not impossible. You can get people to play games with you, and sometimes you can get a game that's entertaining enough where someone will watch you play it. But and a lot of the time, it's like you have to set that time aside and be like solo away from, you know, the other people to play. And I have that really uh, VR is like a real like I feel like very selfish if I play them mm -hmm. for too long because it's just like, OK, well, uh, have fun. I'm, <laughs> I'm out. Woo! <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm out, you know, and it's just like, yeah, it's like I, like I'm oblivious to, you know, my life when I'm doing that. So yeah. it, feels a li it feels a little rude to do it too much. So, I agree with that for sure. And I'm a big yeah. uh, VR fan. I was a huge, huge fan of the PlayStation VR. And it's so it's like it doubles down because it's like, hey, I'm going to check out for a few hours, but I'm like doubly going to check out. Like literally, you know, like if the kids yeah. are on fire, I won't notice. So <laughs> I have headphones in. I can't hear anything. Right? Yeah. I, you know, house is being robbed as long as I don't take the PlayStation. <laughs> you might notice. <laughs> oh, man, that would piss me off. <laughs> yeah. But I guess that's why, you know, I, in prepping for uh, our chat today, like that's why it was so much fun to go back through my collection because a lot of these games are kind of quick hits, like Hercules, like a lot of these PS1 games where you can pop in, 
play for 30 minutes, play for, you know, an hour max and then jump out and you feel like, you know, it's like a, like a nice snack. It's uh you know, you've, you, you kind of got some play time, you experienced something fun and all that, but you didn't have to get super bogged down in, you know, tutorials and like, uh, you know, um, like stories and giant cutscenes and a lot of that kind of stuff. So it, it's these Disney games are good for that because I mean, a lot of them were made for kids, obviously. So it's not doing all this world building so much and you're not like character creation and it's not like if you guys played um elden ring or yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah incredible but elden ring where it took me like an hour just to get set up because i'm like trying to find the perfect name for my character and like you know figure out my class and what i want to look like and what are my eyebrows and like all that kind of stuff <laughs> so it's like it's uh you know, there's this barrier to entry with a lot of modern games, but these, um, you know, something like, you know, I've got Bugs Life here and Tarzan, which is a, a classic Amazing. and all that kind of stuff. It's super easy to jump in and jump out of. And, you know, looking at the stack of stuff, most of the Disney games are real easy to jump in and out of and just uh, spend some little bit of time with. And I think they, uh, I don't have kids, but I have a niece, a uh, little, I think she's seven. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's stuff that still kind of translates uh, today. So I think we were, let's, we'll talk about Tarzan next because that uh, came out a couple years after Hercules. And this is another game I would put on a list of like classic, classic Disney games uh, for the PlayStation. It's even more 2.5D than Hercules was because you go through some like, there are 3D environments. Uh, this time. So the, all the environments are 3D, your character is 3D, but it's still a side scroller uh, for the most part. But it's just beautiful game, great music, really colorful, and still kind of keeps that tradition of the, you know, classic 16-bit uh, Disney style of gaming. Um, yeah, that was uh, Sony's but, fault, though. They, they, they were the ones that were like, we don't want any 2D yeah. games on our system. We want everything. So, and like, there were, a, that's what, there's so many PS1 games that are that 2.5D mm -hmm. to get away with that. You know what I mean? Which gave, we got a lot of weird, interesting, we got like Kalanoa and stuff. Kalanoa, yeah. You know, and we got in uh, R Type Delta and like all the shmups. Mm -hmm. that, all the shmups, they're like 2D side scrolling. And they're like, okay, fine. And then you have like this Let's little the screen isometric sideways section for a minute. And you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then you get back to the, <laughs> it's like they like, all yeah. I like, think, I think the only, I think the Mega Man X seven whatever the hell eight or whatever it was mm -hmm. we got a mega man that was a 2d game that's about it i'm like most every I, we weren't like we were like not allowed to get them it's very weird yeah and you can feel their hand getting forced uh too with you know every company went through that you know like with what well, there's um what was that game that was that's why like so we call the rpgs are like at an angle like everything's everything is like a little yeah because like everything so many... yep and yeah, there's so some funny. stuff that are some games that are good in spite of that, like Mega Man Legends. Like it's mm -hmm. obviously like a four oh, three yeah. game. Um, that that's it's actually serious. I think it needs the remaster treatment. Everyone says, "What would you like to see? Like yeah. get like a compilation." Yeah, I'd love to see those get like uh, upscaled and uh, with Tronbon, the two to, mm -hmm. the two Legend games and Tronbon on a little compilation disc. Yeah, that, that would make me happy. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, they. Uh, they were doing that other chapter, and I remember that like five years ago. There was going to be a third Mega Man Legends three. I think it was going to be on the 3DS, something like that. But it. Oh, um, I did remember hearing rumors. Yeah, about I that. think there was a demo of it, and it's like PT. Uh, you know, if you have the PT oh. demo, you got to like, hold, you know, put lock down your uh, your PS4. But there's a yeah, uh, some 3DSs have uh, the demo of Mega Man Legends three. And that's all that exists uh, out, out in the ether because they uh, they shut that one down. But they have um, they've released every single other goddamn Mega Man game on <laughs> Earth on the PlayStation right. Four. I mean, we got we got the the, yeah. uh, the weird fighting ones that were you know what I mean, like the Battle Network. Yeah, yeah the Battle like we got though we got yep. the strange games even. So can we just get those? I you know I don't even remaster them. Just put them on a disc. Just put Tron Bond right. on the disc with the other two games, and then let me get that physically, so I don't have to like ever have to worry about getting Tron Bond again in my mind. That yeah, would I would love that. And you know, it, uh, there's so many licensing issues, especially with these Disney games. I think 
it's hard to get any of them on the P on the PlayStation four or five because of licensing mm -hmm. issues. Uh, so you really, unfortunately have to track a lot of this stuff down. Uh, if you want to go back and, and play this stuff, um, going back to the 3d thing. So we had Hercules and Tarzan and then the first full transition Disney did to a 3d game was bugs life uh, right here, which is uh, based on the Pixar movie. And it is like one of those, I mean, it's just, it's a pretty good game. It's not great. I wouldn't say you definitely need to play this or anything like that, but it's an example of like Disney games doing what they were really good at, but then being forced into being 3D and like them taking an immediate nosedive in quality because uh, you're dealing with the um, just the mechanics of it. Like it could have been, it would have been a super game, awesome game, if it had just been like a 2D, 2.5D, but they forced it to be this big uh, mm -hmm. 3D thing. And it things that let it down are like the camera and different yeah. things that you wouldn't even think about with a 2D game. Yeah, yeah. So that was their first foray in, uh, foray into that. Um, I, I, I just want to say too, like, um, you're 100 right that they were like almost like masters at 2D games. The yeah. NES games are strong. Like yeah. I, like when you say like on I don't know like when I'm looking for games to jump in and play. Like I often mm -hmm. play Chippendales. I often play, yeah. uh, you know, Ducktales. I throw those games on quite a bit because they're super mm -hmm. fun straight to the point like you said and they're they're, mm -hmm. they're they're just solid good games um yeah dark wing dark is a good game man like i don't know it's just it's super a, good it's, yeah so it's like I yeah don't know. It, it is kind what? of disappointing that they almost like you know there, there's that happens a lot when we transition to new systems mm -hmm. i feel like we have these developers that were so good on what they were doing before and mm -hmm. now they're like develop for the the PlayStation Three. They're like this thing though. <laughs> they go out of business. Like, and it's like I feel like that. I don't know. They do, a lot of comp There's a lot of franchises and companies that they yeah they transition to the new platform. How many like you know franchises died on the PS2? You know right. what I mean? They like went yeah. for the PS1 and they died on the PS2 or vice versa or something. You know, it's weird. You know, and there's a lot of. Um... A lot of companies that you know are good examples of not making that transition very well, uh, but some did do it. Uh, and what's funny about the Disney games is they never really recovered from that. The switch from 2D to 2.5D to 3D, like there was just something that happened where the games, you know, there, there's a few shining examples that'll bring up that are like awesome, but for the most part, it just got they got overly complicated, and but they were obviously rushed at the same time. So I would imagine you can make a game on a short um, production schedule that's 2D, you know, that's relatively simplistic and all that. But they're trying to make these complicated games on on short time uh, in short time frames to hit release dates of movies or when it hits video or something like that. And uh, yeah, they just uh, just tanked. One thing I'll bring up real quickly though that is a pretty decent uh, it, their first good 3D game uh, is Emperor's New Groove. So it that's based on, yeah, no, really, no. really, really, really cool. You have such um, clean copies of all your games, by the way. I just as, oh, as, a, as a collector, I just everyone, I'm like, oh, it's so clean. It's yeah, so nice. yeah, you know, it's. Um, <laughs> I've always taken really good care of my games. Like it's funny, uh, like I always, I never sold anything, and I started hoarding my games in like early 2000. So these are I, all your games that you purchased. On these yeah, games. yeah, these, these are all mine from my collection. Um, but, uh, yeah, so Emperor's New Groove, very cool 3D game. Uh, it's sort of like Spyro, I guess, uh, like, uh, Spyro the Dragon, but the, they got the animation right in this. So the difference between Bugs Life, which came right before it, and, and this is pretty, pretty stellar. Like the animation's really good. It's not all janky and like stuttery and all that. Like it's nice and smooth. And, um, yeah, it's just, I mean, it's Spyro with a llama. But instead of a dragon, but a very, very cool game. There's some good voice acting, good music. It's super fun, super colorful, and just kind of has that joyfulness about it. Um, and I think it's, you know, maybe that's the difference with some of these Disney games is does it really, is it as fun to play as it is to watch the movie? Does, does it make you feel like a kid? Is it bright and jolly and joyful and colorful and vibrant and all that kind of stuff? And um uh emperor's new groove is yeah i would i would put that on a list of not a must play but maybe a step down from that like it's really worth checking out uh, i'm gonna sure. try it now you mentioned it's like spiral yeah, hey, james yeah. one thing i wanted to mention is 
these particular PS1 games you're showing, what's interesting about them is they weren't just regular releases. Like these were, when they came out, one of the best selling games of the time, mm-hmm. and, you know, competing with the Spyro, the Dragons and the Crash Bandicoots. And like everyone's played them when compared to, I couldn't even tell you the last Disney game that isn't a Kingdom Hearts game that got a release <laughs> or that right. isn't like a Disney oh. Infinity title. It's Dreamlight Valley is well, the big game now. If you don't know if you're yeah, aware what yeah. that is. Which is yeah, like I played through it. It's live service type thing. It's okay. It's like a Disney's version of Animal Crossing um, mm-hmm. is the best way to describe it. Uh, I played it for a little bit and I was like obsessed with it for about a week. And then it just you know does what all of those things do and it's repetitive missions it's like you know how many times can you go fetch a basket of apples for somebody or like you know that kind of stuff so it's uh but it, it, it was a step in the right direction for disney because i think as we'll we'll get to it's like they they kind of dropped off production on things i don't know if disney has taken like a a wait and see approach to what they do next like you know, with the Switch 2 on the way, and we don't know if Xbox is making another Xbox or what they're doing console-wise. And, you know, the PS5 already being almost, you know, touted as not dead, but like they just said, they're over halfway through the life cycle. So they're already like putting it on... It, they didn't say this, but it feels like they're they're thinking that it's on life support or whatever they think of uh, th- this generation of games. So I have a feeling that Disney is being very very careful about sort of what what next steps they take um, i feel like no one's even making i feel like there's no games coming out even i feel like there's nothing even happening i feel like the whole industry is like let's just wait and see what happens guys yeah yeah grand theft auto is coming out next year guys we better hold off making the game for a while (laughs) well that's true i mean if 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 uh, if giant live service games eat up 80 percent of the market share Maybe you do just hang out and wait for a while, or I don't know. I don't know. It's gotta be. It's gotta be really like um, not a great feeling to have worked on a game for seven or eight years, though. Mm-hmm. And be, like not sure about releasing it at this point, and I don't know. It's it's rough. It takes a long time to make these games, guys. It's it's not like it. Like I don't know how long did Nintendo games make take to make. Like I feel like we got like twenty five Mega Man's in seven minutes. Right, so, right. right, right. Months, maybe high end, maybe six months, eight months. Uh, something yeah. like that but but still i'm not like that now Mm-mm. so like um i don't know it's an interesting um market right now let's put it that way it also yeah. feels like sony these days prefer to go down the road of releasing games for i wouldn't say adults but mm-hmm. you know the whole ma r-rated game where if you want to mm-hmm. play a kid's game it's more likely on the nintendo system and I, I would assume if Disney mm-hmm. wanted to do an IP, they would more likely go down the road of, well, let's release it with Nintendo because mm-hmm. you know, that's where we're going to have more sales and different things like that. Yeah, I yeah, agree they- with that. That's kind of the only outlet unless, you know, I you know I wonder if the next generation of kids is even going to play a Switch too or whatever. Like, is it just primarily every all kids just on their phones playing games? Like, you know, is it, it was funny the, to see the 3DS drop off as fast as it did because you know that was a the ds was huge like ds is mm-hmm. what is it is it the biggest selling console of all time or second after the second or third it's yeah absolutely. number one handheld but i think it's the second <laughs> overall ridiculous and but you know when but for consoles know, it's playstation 2 and then the switch is number two right now yeah consoles, if you count which is going to be number one so it's a matter of time right yeah. But yeah, just crazy the do- drop off once like iPhones or smartphones uh, got introduced and took away a huge market share. And Disney isn't dumb. Like, I mean, I think they closed Disney Interactive and all so that. Flappy Bird did to our society. Right, yeah. right. And uh, damn yeah. flappy little bird. <laughs> right, and I don't know if kids are discerning enough to to care. You know, like you know, as long as the game's good and it's entertaining, do they care if it's on their phone or you know on a console or? Or whatever. But here's the thing. Here, here's the thing. I they the it doesn't even have to be good or entertaining. Like they they design a lot of mobile games just to be addicting. Yeah. If you're a poor yeah. little kid, just yeah, you like, spend oh, money. Yeah. I'm just gonna play this. You just get psyched like logged into. I gotta log in to get my daily gem pack, and then I have to <laughs> do this thing. And if I win three fights a day, I get an extra twenty two boogity coins, and I can invest the coins to get squiggly gems, and I can then get a hat <laughs> and blah blah blah. And then they just all that crap. 
that like just psychologically hooks people in. I mean, dude. Yeah. Ugh. Well, that's that's an interesting thing going back to what we were talking about, like about attention spans, you know, um, I, I feel like in general, it's hard for me to get hooked on something like it, like I used to. And I don't oh, know if, lucky, that's, bro. if that's a <laughs> me problem or whatever. Boy, I have, like an arrow at it, constantly afraid yeah. of games like, no, no, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm like, Final Fantasy, you need to stop. It's been yeah. going on too long. <laughs> I definitely haven't played certain games before because I'm scared yeah. I'll get addicted to them. Like I never yep. played World of Warcraft because I yeah. know I got an addictive personality yep. and I know friends who don't have right. lives because of that game and I don't want to join them, even though they mm -hmm. might have a good time. Sorry, I'm not going to get a part of it. You're totally right, Pixie, but if you ever want to play, let me know. I'll play with you. <laughs> I've been, I've been, they, uh, I've been watching Asmongold lately and he's been playing Classic Wild and they released some like new content for like vanilla. It's kind of hard to describe. Like they took like the original thing and they have like, they're like revamping it and tweaking. I played it classic. Well, when it first came out again. So. All right. So anyway, like I can do it. I swear it is. It is like an itch. It is like a devil. Of my back. <laughs> like mm -hmm. You love. Wow. I'm like, I do, but I hate it. It's like, I, I hate what it does to me, but I love it at the <laughs> same time, man. I'm telling you, it's like, it's like a, it's like a, ex-girlfriend that you got arrested because you hung out with her 12 times but you just keep hanging out with her and you can't help it because she's just <laughs> something about her man <laughs> yeah i've got a few things like that recently i think that my thing is it's fewer and further between so it takes it I, I feel like i play through about 10 games until i find that one game where i'm hooked on it so i think the last one hell divers i'm right on on the edge hell divers too so but, that's what well, I'm, I am afraid to play for that. That is one of those games. Yeah, it looks exactly so good. dude. It looks, it looks so good. So good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, if I play that, forget it. I'm 3000 hours later. They were like, Joe, where's your pickups? I'm like, hey, pickups. No divers. <laughs> <laughs> I get, I get my thing with it so far. Uh, first impressions. I've only been playing it for a week, but uh, you'll have really good. It's sort of like any multiplayer thing. You'll have great uh, a great time with it. Like you'll go in and play. The campaigns are usually about forty minutes, forty five minutes uh, is is the time investment. And that's a, uh, that's, a, that's a healthy amount, less than an hour. I like yeah, I like Dota for that reason. Games like that, they're not too too long. Like a, that's not you know anything long. But you'll than go that in, campaign. yeah. And it, the, the thing about it is, it's you'll go in and you'll play for 40, 45 minutes. And if you have a bad time, you're like, I'm never playing this thing again. Like mm. and then you put it down and come back to it and you have a great one and then you're hooked and then you're playing it all night. But all it takes is one stinker of a, a campaign for you to be like, well, screw this thing. I'm done. So it's very up and down in terms That's of how, the addiction. Yeah. Um, Binding of Isaac was like, it's like that too. It's like, if, mm -hmm. you, if you just play it and you don't have like any good runs at all and you just get yeah. wrecked, like you'll probably quit. Like this game sucks. But yeah. if you get, uh, lucky and you have like a good combination of items and you become like god tier on a run you'll be like oh ho, 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 this is so awesome and you'll be chasing that high forever like trying to yeah. get like oh man so you just need to have like those good good runs and then that's how you get hooked mm -hmm. um but you it, you know i get the design though it's like you have to have bad runs too otherwise that good run doesn't feel that great like you know it has to be on, more I, bad runs mm -hmm. than good runs i i relate it to yeah. PUBG. i got into the PUBG. Mm -hmm. this is the way battle royale works is 100 people go into the game one person comes out the winner and if yeah. you're not that one person you're not going to have a good time unless you know you have you can't have a good time but majority of the time unless you win you don't have that experience and you, know, you play until you get that dopamine feeling of winning and suddenly that one 30 minute game has turned into a 12 hour session that you're like, Oh, what's the time? I got to get up. Yeah. It's so funny how multiplayer games, I don't know a bigger discrepancy between like hating the game and it being one of your best gaming experiences you've ever had. Like PUBG is like that. I got down to uh, two, two people. It was me and another guy and I lost, but it was like, I mean the rush and the high and the excitement. I put that in, you know, like getting my, uh, uh, Super Nintendo for my birthday one year, or like getting a you know, wh whatever your top tier gaming moments of your life uh, is. But then my worst when time you're in that 1v1, your yeah. heart rate would have been at 180. <laughs> yeah, 
crazy, crazy, crazy. But then when you get taken out in like the first two minutes, and you're like, this game is terrible. And yeah, so. Yeah. And then you, you restart it and you die and you restart it and you die and you restart. <laughs> Why am I playing this? But then you have that one moment where you're like, your adrenaline's up and you get this feeling that, you know, it's, I, I guess I can't, kind of relate it to like sport where you mm -hmm. see your team win in the last second and you get that dopamine feeling. Like you don't get it from many video games, but Battle Royales did a really good job of giving you that like dopamine kick all at once. Yeah. Yeah. So you got, know, oh, go ahead, man. No, I was just going to say, uh, I'm uh, I'm a little too old school. I, I, I've i been playing Quake too. That's my time. I like Deathmatch, <laughs> baby. No, none of this one winner. I'm just going to run out like it's Valhalla and just blah! Like if you die, you just come back and you just keep it's just a murder fest. I like that. I love that old school design, dude. Just you know, like literally, like you spawn and you just people are already there murdering you. Like it's just you know crazy. Also, what I think is really funny is in Quake Two, even the NPCs like trash talk you and can give you the middle finger and stuff like that. And I think that is <laughs> hilarious because I'm like, old games being like a toxic jerk was like part of the game it was like built yeah. into the game it was expected <laughs> of you it was expected well, like here's how you this is how you teabag your friends you hit yeah. this button this is how you flick them off this is how you swear at them in the game like it was part <laughs> of the game i i like and i'm playing it like man think times have changed like <laughs> like we grew up on these streets kids like i don't know yeah it was, it was the it wild was west different. back then yeah, <laughs> it was, you sure. were just expect they're like well what would what are what are what would make all these young men have fun you could teabag each other, flick each other. Oh, yeah, 100 percent Put that in the game. Like, I don't know. It's just so weird how the at like things have changed. I don't know. You just got me thinking of Halo right now with the teabagging. Yeah. That one of the first games to do it, do it properly. I don't know, man, but it's it is infuriating when someone does that to you. <laughs> okay, how, how long it's been, how old you are. You're like sitting there, you know, you like cook off a grenade on X and if something comes running over. <laughs> just infuriated i always feel like i respawned with my tail in between my legs and i'm like i'm sorry guys or like you're just you're you're embarrassed for some reason even though you're not you don't see the people or anything like that so uh i love those things i love games like that so i don't know i do miss i do i miss that the only thing i hate about uh online games too is like blobbies waiting mm -hmm. i hate waiting to play like when you're waiting for something you need look we need three more people and you're like I hated that about WoW too. Like, I don't know if you've played WoW, but like, yeah, you, you would queue up for things. And, you know, if you're a tank or a healer, you would instantly get into everything because it was, there's not enough tanks and healers. But if you're a DPS and you queue up, it's like 45 minutes, an hour, or whatever, maybe, yeah. maybe look you. Yeah. And so you'll be sitting there like 45 minutes, an hour waiting to do a dungeon or something. And then you'll finally be like, oh man, I need a, I need a sandwich. And you'll go in the other room for one second and you'll come back and your queue is gone. You're like, oh, missed it <laughs> that's an interesting point too oh my god <laughs> kind of what you were saying earlier about just not having time like if you have a relationship or family or, or whatever uh i don't know about mm -hmm. you guys but i do most of my gaming late at night so mm -hmm. you know after 11 o'clock 12 o'clock something like that multiplayer games are hard at that time of night like i've been sitting in lobbies just trying to cobble together like five people just so we can have the bare minimum to start campaigns on, on stuff mm -hmm. So yeah, I do not like that anymore. I don't yeah. like that. Yeah, it does not the game I'm playing right now just added a really cool new feature. So I played GeoGuessr, which is a geography-based game. Mm -hmm. And there's three modes you can queue for. They've just added this feature that you can queue for all of them at once, and it will just mm -hmm. give you the first available game. So my match queue times have gone from sitting in the lobby for 10 minutes to I haven't waited for more than 30 seconds to get a game and it's yeah it's just talking like about little quality of life thing that they didn't have to put in that they did that just like oh you've solved queue times thank you <laughs> yeah and wow you can queue as one of the three things you can be a tank or a healer or a gbs but if you pick tank you're getting tank baby like that's what's popping up like it's just one of those look there's just not enough but if you want to like level a character and you can tank you can, you can level a character to just run through dungeons like so fast because you can just tank tank and like and you'll get insta cues. So that's kind of fun. At least that's how it used to be. I don't know how it is now. God, I don't even I have no idea if they mm -hmm. even have that anymore. So yeah, Disney does have a lot. Yeah, so I um 
you know, pl- the PlayStation era is great, but like I said, I love the um, the NES games. I love the Super NES games, and I love the Genesis games. My actual favorite Disney game, uh, personally, is the Mickey Mouse Castle of Illusion on the Genesis. You play that? Can't game? believe you said that. Yeah, my my favorite too. To this day, that that's my favorite. Disney my game favorite too. Yeah, you haven't. Then you have impeccable taste, sir. Because that's the best Disney game. It's such <laughs> they're a doing a remake. Game, have you have you seen they're doing the remake? No, I haven't. Yeah, it's coming out on PS Five. I don't. I, maybe this year. I think it, it drops. But yeah, they're they're doing the, Is this a the same game or a sequel or no same game. I think they're okay. they're, reven- they're redoing the original game and hopefully adding Sick. you know. Um, yeah, I love that game, dude. I like yeah. Fantasia as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was Fantasia. I feel like was really hard. Like I was not that game was hard, cool. man. Like yeah. Um, and then there was another. Wasn't there another one on the Genesis two? Like not like there's Castle of Illusion, the like World of Illusion, or something like that too, or something like that. Yeah, World of Illusion. Yeah. And that mm-hmm. one was all right, but I didn't I didn't vibe with it as much as the castle. No, it didn't have the charm, and then the animation and controls weren't weren't as good. Uh, which you need for those platformer type games. But Castle Illusion was like, everything was spot on. Like it was super creative. It was mm. inventive, great environments, great music, all that kind of stuff. It's sort of, uh, you know, we were talking about like something like DuckTales or, or the, those games that kind of rise above being a licensed game and are just flat out good games. And that's what Castle Illusion was. It was a great game first, but then it just happened to be a, a Disney game second. We're on the topic of um, remasters and remakes. Mm -hmm. One that absolutely nailed it for me is the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360 remaster of DuckTales. Yeah. Such a good job. Fantastic. It's funny. I got that right here on my stack. It's, um, (laughs) yeah, remember, uh, so this came out in, man, I want to say, what was it, 2012? 2012, uh, it says on the back here, thankfully. but yeah, that remaster was really good. It looks beautiful. The music is great. Oh, I was going to say the music in that. Oh, fantastic. Um, actually, just because uh, it was a downloadable game uh, when it came out, and then it went physical. I only just got this a few weeks ago, and the guy who sold it to me was like, sometimes I just put it on, on to listen to the music. Like, he doesn't even play it. Like, he just has the music going uh, in the background. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, beautiful. So did you watch cool uh, all game. the cartoons as a kid too? Well, uh, cuz I I love Tailspin and DuckTales yeah. and Chip and Tails and like I uh what was it? Uh Gummy Bears bounce yeah. every day everywhere. I used to watch that every day, dude. Yeah, <laughs> like, Gummy Bears was my be- yeah. yeah. Super yeah, super good. Was like, it was funny cuz uh um yeah, it was like Disney was in your home for the first time because you know you, you had to go to the movie theater. So or good VHS too, or something. But the, yeah, to have them on TV was great. The Gummy Bears is great. Uh, Ducktales is great. All those after school ones that you used to get. Uh, uh, Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers that was good. Uh, Ducktales is the Duck. best. Yeah, um, in my opinion, I love Ducktales the best. And then I love Dark. Darkwing Duck was cool, but it was a little corny. Uh, yeah, it was just it was it was on purpose though. That was kind of the shtick. Yeah, those uh, DuckTales were uh, really smart, too. I think they were based off of the old Disney comic books from, like, the 40s. Uh, so mm-hmm. a lot of the scripts for the the shows came from those. So they were just really well-written. And uh, I like that. Oh. It was kind of like Indiana Jones for kids. Like, you had these awesome adventures and all that. Um, Did they make Goof Troop games? I feel like they should have if they didn't. Super Nintendo has a Goof Troop game that's actually really good. Okay. Um, I don't. Yeah, I don't think it was on anything else, uh, but it's on Super Nintendo. That's worth tracking down if you've never played that. I haven't actually. I was just thinking yeah. about like what other ones shows that I like. I think Goof Troop came a little later though. It wasn't like mm-hmm. in the original group of shows that I watched. Uh, yeah, I think it was cuspy between like 16-bit era and 32-bit era. So it was. Uh, <laughs> you <laughs> <laughs> You said the magic word. <laughs> um, I think Good old uh, Mac uses to do thumbs up. So, <laughs> yeah. um, it's funny too. I can't remember where somebody was talking about, but I didn't know this either. But I heard that that someone said the Little Mermaid game on NES is really good. Yeah, really um, good. It, uh, not. Yeah. People didn't love it as much as DuckTales and Rescue Rangers when it came out, but I got it and I really liked it. I think it holds up a lot. I want to try it because 
yeah just never came across my radar it's never yeah it's got some cool play mechanics and the the like the fighting system is really good it is is a cool game it doesn't it's not super hard or anything but i guess it's Mm -hmm. sort of like capcom medium uh difficulty but it's definitely worth playing through if you've never tried it yeah it's probably still like challenging like i said i was trying some of these other games earlier uh just absolutely brutal and then also um they uh, have you played ghouls and ghosts at all i was playing the yeah. new one the resurrection yeah. that game oh my goodness I haven't man. tried it yet oh man like on there's four difficulties and even like on the second difficulty it's pretty ridiculous yeah and then like the third is it's 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 doable but it's it's not fair it's totally unfrustrating and the, the actual like the top difficulty is just outright sadistic. yeah i just can't imagine like willingly trying to do that for more than like <laughs> an hour of my life it was it's like i've tried for like like it was one of those things that's like an hour and i don't think i got one level completed i was just like wow. is it uh like insane. pattern pattern recognition or what what is the difficult part of it um so with that game the there's a lot of things that are weird about it so the first is that like your jump like you cannot alter your momentum of your jump in that game like in in most games if you jump and you hold down the back button you will like slow your jump a little bit you know what i mean but like in this game like Mm -hmm. it's a full commit like you jump and you're going like and you can't change like the angle and um just the way they have everything set up it's like everything is just perfectly designed to mess you up and and (laughs) and like it's there is pattern recognition in a sense but it's also rng at the same time so it'll be like yes this is where all 12 of monsters spawn and they all kind of spawn here at the same time but half the time they'll throw eyeballs at you from this direction and this time this they won't or this guy will spit fire and this time he won't or this guy will swoop and this time he won't it's like so it's just oh man and it's just evil and yeah. if you like it's it's purposely like a trolley game like it's mm-hmm. for some like like me who's like wants something like so if you like if you want a game that's like on it's like it's supposed to be too hard like yeah, <laughs> yeah. this is perfect it's yeah <laughs> but it gives There's you some... four difficulties so you don't have to either you can chill out if you want to just like play on the first difficulty you don't have to make it crazy but yeah i go back there's some games like that that i absolutely love that are that hard but um the older i get too i think i don't want to be stressed out when i'm playing a game this so game love, will 100 yeah. percent piss you off like <laughs> yeah. it will it is not nice yeah I, my girlfriend literally was like i think you should play something else <laughs> you're going to we're gonna be on the news so please sit that down you know what i mean like yeah like, raging silently <laughs> like that's the scary rage not the loud rage the quiet rage the, like, right right the she's like you're gonna inside. snap i can tell like let's go, let's go <laughs> like it's so funny man i mean the lion king on the nes was like that right oh the brutally hard kids game that no kid ever beat yeah yeah what's funny about uh that game especially is it's beautiful like another game where the animation is wonderful um the music's great colorful and all that kind of stuff but it's so hard that it kind of you hit a wall about halfway through the game aladdin is like that too uh for genesis um the genesis version especially where it's like game is unbelievably good but you just hit this difficulty uh spike um almost like a battletoads difficulty thing where it's just so impossibly hard that you know you either persevere and learn the patterns and all that stuff or you just give up so um, it's interesting because video games prior to the nes had to be made like that because yeah. they were run on quarters and the mm-hmm. heart of the game was the more money the machine made but then yeah. when you get the home console it's like the complete opposite you want people to actually finish these games mm-hmm. and not be stuck for it well, they no, they 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 admitted that um they made the games harder back then, so people would rent them more. Yeah, okay. good point. Because they would get um, I guess more money. I'm assuming, but I've heard developers say that they made the game harder on purpose so that you couldn't beat it w- if you rented it once. You had to rent it like a couple of times if you tried to beat it, if you could even beat it. Yeah, 
But, That's uh, funny. I, it, it, that had an opposite effect on me as a kid. Because if I rented something that was too hard, I just wouldn't rent it again. I'd be like, "Screw this game! Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to play a game that that's no fun to play." But uh, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, I wouldn't probably keep going back to a game that I didn't like like that. <laughs> so I forget where we left. Uh, oh, so we we're get at the tail end of the PS One mm-hmm. and everything, and then. You know, you were talking about um, how well these things sold. So one of the best-selling games, Disney games ever, was PlayStation 2. It was the Finding Nemo game. And I, I never bought this it. one. Yeah, I never bought this one when I came out. I, I got this after the fact uh, a few years later. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's a greatest hits title uh, for one thing. But this thing was ridiculously popular. Like this is one of those games that you go into any uh, gaming store and they've got you know twenty copies of this thing, or like you know even your uh, like pawn shops and what they've got uh, copies of it. Uh, it's also an example of a game that's just not very good. Uh, so it's another like two point five D uh, style game, uh, but it's just not fun. I've uh, never heard anyone talk about that game ever. No, 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 yeah, no, it's a stinker. It's funny for the amount of people who bought a copy of this thing. I don't know if anybody even liked it or just kids played it and they didn't know the difference or whatever. But um, yeah, that kind of, this is one of the first Disney games on PS2. So this is just sort of the start of the that, uh, play, that's PlayStation That's a Christmas 2 present right? game. That's a Christmas present game. Right. right 1,000 right. percent. Like, I definitely associate the PS2 with the way a lot of those games would come out. If, if a TV show or a movie was popular, it got a PS2 mm-hmm. game at the time. It didn't matter if yeah. it was or not, it was a PS2 version. That's funny because that's when the Disney games took the biggest hit, I think. Uh, you, you know, even at the end of the PlayStation 1 era. So this is Treasure Planet on uh, PS1. Uh, this was made pretty late into the cycle. I forget when this came out, but this was, I think the PS2 was already out when this thing got released. But they're still trying. Like, they're still, it's not a great game. Um, you know, it's a 3D kind of adventure platformer game uh, that's not super good, but they were still trying. Where you get to Finding Nemo, where that's when it started to become not shovelware, but it came, became like standard, you know, movie tie in games, m- licensed games where it was, they threw something together. It was kind of an afterthought. But up until the end of the PS1, they were still like, not every game was amazing, but they were still like putting a lot of thought. You could tell that a lot of effort was going into these things. But yeah, PS2 is when the factory started of just uh, cranking out all this licensed stuff. And I think- Oh my God. One, well, I mean, are... from a, from a um, consumer, uh, from a publisher point of view, mm-hmm. if they didn't put any effort into Finding Nemo and it's still- Made right. greatest hits and sold. <laughs> then why are you going to put all this effort in if you're going to yeah. get it anyway? It makes sense, right? Yeah, and another one that's along those lines is The Incredibles, which came out a couple of years after. I think this is 06, um, 06 release. This is better uh, than Finding Nemo, uh, but not all that much better. Um, and it's funny. Which that, the, sh- that should be a good game. It's it a superhero good. game. It should yeah, be a good yeah. game. Like, you can literally yeah. make have so much fun stuff happen in a game like that. Why it starts out pretty good. The first couple levels are good and it's not a complete wash. Like this is one that, you know, if you find it for 10 bucks, this is, this is worth picking up and playing through, but it's still, there's nothing a whole in all that special about it. It's not like, it's not a hidden gem. It's not, you know, anything you really need to play. It's sort of like, you know, if you have a 10 bucks and uh, an evening free, you can, you can sit down with that one for a little while. And it's funny. It was, uh, as average as those last two games were, um, one of the next ones that came up on my when I was going through my archives was this: the first Pirates of the Caribbean oh, game. Uh, it's Legend of Jack Sparrow. So different systems that one. Yeah, yeah. So this was this thing is like actual trash. Like it, it, <laughs> it it's kind of broken. The graphics are terrible, um, and it's funny. It's this is a Bethesda game. Like Bethesda made this thing, and I think it came out. I think it was right after Elder Scrolls Four. So what was that? Oblivion uh, came out, and it was before Fallout Three, I think. So in between those two, like classic games, they put this out, and, and they obviously didn't have their top brass on this one. But uh, 
yeah, just a stinker of a, a game and um, not fun at all. Just uh, completely like, you know, cash grab uh, movie tie in. And Dude, um, I'm going to have that theme song stuck in my head, though. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which sort of... James, I, I can't begin to title, but I know on the PS3, what Disney were doing was um they were reskinning games. So there yeah. was a. I can't think of the name. But there was a game, generic game. It wasn't didn't have a movie tie-in. And then they released the Disney version, and it was the exact same game. Just they put the Disney characters in. There are a few <laughs> games like that. Yeah, I forget. There's I an forget Adventure which one. Game that that happened to. Um, I'm yeah. trying to think of it now. It's in my wall. Is it Cloudy of a Chance of Meatballs? Or... Something like that. Meet the Robinsons. One of those like of those. quick platinum yeah. games, and the yeah. trophy community is like, "Oh, this is the same game, guys. <laughs> the same trophy <laughs> list." Today. Yeah. Yeah, there are a few reskins, which is funny. Um, uh, you know, you go back to the PS1 era, there's like uh, Disney Tetris. And then there is uh, like Mickey Speedway or something like that, which was basically just a, you know, Mario Kart clone. But they Uh-oh. did slap their name on a few things. I've got one of them here. I think this is the, this is close to PS2 launch. It's called Disney Golf. I had never heard of this until uh, recently, too. It was, I think EA put this out, and it was just a reskin of one of their uh, golf game uh, engines from the time. And this is like as average of a uh, licensed game as you can get. Like you could, they did, they put a few Disney characters in, and a few like I think there's a castle, like the Cinderella castles on one of the courses in the background. Um, but yeah, total like cash grab, you know, cobbled something together and uh, uh, stuck it on a shelf. Um, but there are a few of those. This is just one of those random ones where, like, I don't even know why this one exists. You know, yeah, it's not especially bad or anything, but it's just a big question mark on, on that one. So if, if you're a game developer, what you do is you just yeah. make, like, a golf game, a racing game, mm-hmm. and, like, a party game. And then you just shop right. it around to, like, all of the different companies and just throw their characters in each of them and release all of the same games with all this yeah. genius it's genius i guess mario kicked that off you know they, they put there was mario golf which was like the first one and then there's mario tennis soccer baseball all that kind of stuff and so i think Mar- just mario reading up now they're saying that amazing. um robotics yeah. mean bean machine and kirby's adventure are just reskins of the pyro pyro games yeah yeah right exactly yeah so just it's really been going on for a long time and they just, you know, most of these games are that small that you wouldn't even notice unless you are like hardcore into the scene. Yeah, yeah, you know, and it's, it benefits everyone too. Like the developers don't have to do a lot to change to reskin the game, and then Disney gets a licensed game out of out of it too. When I went to Disney for the first time, I played Poyo Poyo in Epcot. In Epcot, they had like a bunch of arcade machines set up. Yeah. That you could play games. And I remember like uh, I went there with my friend and his family and like they were like normal human beings. So they were like, oh, games. Cool. Let's go to do Disney. And I'm like, no, I'm going to stay on here and play these games all day. You, you nothing you're going to make me. I'm not leaving this spot. Free arcade games. Free. Are you are you crazy? I don't uh-huh. know what is in these things? Uh, and they were like. They were games from Japan. These are mm-hmm. our Japanese arcades. Like I, they, you just didn't mm-hmm. ever have a chance to play these games. And when I grew up, like it was, you never saw stuff like this. And so I was like, please, let's just let me just 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 leave me. I'll find my way back to New England. Just go. <laughs> <laughs> they were like That's dragging funny. me out of there. But I always remember that, and I remember it's so funny how like. Like people could never imagine, but I was blown away by Poyo Poyo. Like mm-hmm. I thought it was amazing. I'm like, this game is so fun. Oh my god. <laughs> I thought it was the greatest game in the world. And now it's like, oh yeah, I'll play this for like 20 minutes, but all right, that's cool. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's just like so funny how things are different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some things like that just catch you as a kid. I remember being uh, my big one was Tetris Attack. Uh, on Super Nintendo, there was a Pokemon Pug- Puzzle League. It's the same game on N64, but that was like the classic uh, uh, puzzle game that I was just obsessed with. Uh, same kind of thing as Poyo, where um, mm-hmm. I was just enamored with it, like just sucked in. Fun game, though, Pokemon Puzzle yeah. League. Yeah, great, great. Uh, 
too, real quick. Uh, did you ever play um, Super Puzzle Fighter? That Street Fighter oh, yeah. puzzle game. The biggest yeah. one. Yeah. Ridiculously addictive. I love that game. Would you guys um, like to play the Figsy Quiz? Yeah. <laughs> but there's like a new game called Crystal Crisis. You should check out it if you like. Okay. Puzzle Fighter. It's a similar type of thing. It's a competitive puzzler. That would be awesome. Yeah, I'll check that out. <laughs> Well, guys, we have a very special quiz today. Our quiz today is entirely Disney themed. Who would have seen that one? I thought it was DreamWorks. <laughs> you lied to me. <laughs> oh, that game I was thinking of is a DreamWorks game. Ah. It probably will be. Now, for the third week in a row, chat, you guys still haven't got the question that we've given you three weeks ago. So we once again have added a hint to the chat question. We won't move on until someone gets this game. So, guys, name that video game from the photos. There are now three hints on this little picture. Surely someone's going to get it. Oh, I get it. I finally get the last picture. I'm so stupid. <laughs> oh, I get it. You, sh I, get it. <laughs> I get it now. I just don't know the first one. All right, I'm sure someone will be able to get it this time. All right, <laughs> let's get into the quiz, guys. So as I was mentioning, it is a completely Disney-themed quiz. So this should be a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to set up. Uh, James, as you're our guest, would you like to go first or second today? Uh, I will go second. You know what's funny is, uh, even though I run a Disney account, my Disney knowledge is uh, very specific. Like I like the things I like a lot, but I don't have this giant breadth of uh, Disney knowledge that some may think. So this is going to be good. I'm looking forward to this. Uh, I think you're going to do well. We've talked All about right. half of these games on the quiz already. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joe, you're going to go first. All right. Question. I know the quiz answer, so I'm answering it if no one gets it this week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking saying it. <laughs> All right, question number one. We'll we'll give you guys until the end of the quiz. So if anyone wants that point, they've got till the end of the quiz, and then Joe's going to steal it. All right, question one. Who was the publisher of Disney's Haunted Mansion video game? Is it THQ? TDK, Konami, or Capcom? Based on absolutely nothing, I'm going to say THQ. THQ is incorrect. No, oh, that's a shocker. For the steal? Uh, I was going to say THQ myself because they did so many of these things. Um, is it TDK? Correct answer. TDK. James takes the first one. You know, it's funny is I didn't even realize I just know them for making like cassette tapes from my, I was just going to say, I thought TD, I didn't know TDK made <laughs> games. I thought I'm like, what is TDK? I thought that they make cameras or some weird shit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everyone was making PS2 games back in the day. Yeah. All right. Moving on to question number two, James, this one's for you. All right. The cover, this is the cover of which game franchise? Is it Karaoke Revolution? Sing it? Sing Star or Dance Dance Revolution? Man, that's tough because they're all basically the same except for Dance Dance Revolution. Um, my memory is right. I'm going to say it's Sing It. Sing It is incorrect. Okay, let's do Karaoke Revolution. Also incorrect. It was actually Dance Dance Revolution. Wow. Ah, oh, you know I'm a huge dance dance expert too. <laughs> and my Cyrus fan, three. my words were crossing over, and I still messed it up. Yeah, this one's for you. Okay. Disney's Hide and Seek is an exclusive for what console? The GameCube, the Wii, the PS2, or the Xbox? Oh, I've never heard of this game. Uh, I'll say the Wii. Now the Wii is incorrect. James for the steal. I actually don't know this one either. I'm going to say uh, GameCube. 
correct answer. All right. GameCube. James getting Dixon. crushed. Wow. It's you said this is going to be DreamWorks. It looks like a game that would be expensive these days. <laughs> it does. Mm. All right. Question number four. Uh, James, this one's for you. I'm going to show you a video game, and you have to tell me the missing word in the title. Oh, man. Something blank world, blank world. Um, well, it's not Disney World. It's not Disney, Disney World. Um, is it something stupid like fantasy, fantasy world? Fantasy is incorrect. Sure. I believe this is a uh, magical world. Magical is correct. You you were right with it. It's something stupid like <laughs> yeah, it was just the other one. Guess who so, owns uh, both Magical yeah. World One and Two on the 3DS? <laughs> Heck yeah! I was I was gonna talk about those games earlier when we were talking about the 3DS, but we just got off track. So, are they any good? Real quick, they're okay. They're decent. Yeah. I like them better than Dreamlight Valley. They're more okay. like finished. I don't like live service games. That's what it's, I just have a huge bias against those types of games. So, yeah. not that that game's Dreamlight Valley is probably a better game in every way, but I just don't like the Buy a season pass. Log in. I don't like any of that crap, man. I don't yeah, like any of that stuff. Same. All right, moving on to question five. Joe, this one's for you. And you mm. also have to put the missing word in the game title. Okay. <laughs> Butt games. No, I'm just kidding. It's um <laughs> uh, um bug. I will say bug. Bug is incorrect. Oh man, uh, I'm trying to think where they are. What's their location? It looks like they're in the jungle. Is it? Is it Jungle Games? It is Jungle. Oh, how about that? Wow, very nice. Well, the artwork. Uh, whoever whoever designed the artwork for that did an amazing job. Because yeah, hundred percent. Really I like tied it all together. Trying to work out where they are. I'm like always onto it here. <laughs> all right, James. Question number six. Again, you have to put the missing word in the game title. Ooh, is it villains? It is villains. Well done. I, that. I actually don't know that game. Either. What is that game? That sounds awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what is this? I want to play that. I want to play the queen just off with the hands. Just cutting out <laughs> everybody says. All right, Joe. Next mm-hmm. one's for you. Name one of two Disney characters on the front cover of the first Kingdom Hearts game. Goofy. It's correct. I would have also accepted Donald Duck. All right, moving on to question number eight. James, this one's for you. Which right. Disney character tried to catch chicken eggs in the Nintendo Game Watch handheld? Uh, is that Mickey Mouse? It is Mickey Mouse. Well done. I was just talking to my brother about that the other day. We were talking about our old Game & Watch games. Man, I used to have this one. I bet that would be worth some money. I don't know where it went to. Oh, I'm sure it is. In the box and everything, it would be for sure. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on to question number nine. Joe? Name any one of the two Street Fighter characters missing from the screenshot of the Disney Wreck-It Ralph movie. Ken. It's got to be Ken, the red. It's got to be Ken. Ken is incorrect. James? Wow. Oh, man. I only saw this movie one time. I think it's Zangief. Zangief is one of the answers. So Zangief yeah. or M. Bison we were looking for. Mm. All right. Moving on to question number 10. James, you'll go first. Disney's classic games, Aladdin and The Lion King, were re-released in 2019. Two years later, the updated version of the game was released. What was the game added to the completion page? Oh, I know this, uh, because I had to buy this stupid thing twice. Uh, Jungle Book, they added Jungle Book. Jungle Book is correct. Which is the worst of the three, but it's still pretty good. 
I think every single boat, every person was like, why did you guys make me buy this twice? Why did you do mm -hmm. this? Why? <laughs> I and think they, they added better add... versions too, didn't they? They, add more, like, they versions added the games or something. They added the Super Nintendo version of Aladdin, which they didn't mm. put in the first one uh, for some reason. So they updated it. So they just put out a, I don't know, if they realized the they put out a version. one. Right, Genesis right. version, it was the better version. Of Definitely better. All right, question 11. Joe, this one's for you. <laughs> what Japanese company developed Disney's Aladdin for the Master System and Game Gear consoles? This company has exactly the same name as one of EA's most known and popular franchises. What is the who who what is this? What am I being asked? Who what Japanese them? company developed Disney's Aladdin oh. for the Master System and the Game Gear? And the company has the exact same name as one of EA's most well known and popular franchises. <laughs> I can only think of stupid answers, man. I don't know. I don't know. Pass. I have no idea. All right, James, hand it over to you. Uh, John Madden. He was he was a big Aladdin fan. <laughs> I, I like the way you're thinking outside of the box. There, but the answer <laughs> no. we were looking for was Sims. Wow, how about that? I bet uh, that uh, that Master System version has to be expensive. I have, I've got the Game Gear one because they made that in mass quantities, but like those late period Master System games are worth a lot of money. Yeah, I don't think we got a lot of those in the United States either. Those were released mm -hmm. like Europe and Brazil and stuff like that. Yeah. A lot of them. So, yeah, it is amazing sometimes when you're like, you're like, Tony Hawk Four was on the Master System. What the fuck? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're right because the Bra <laughs> the Brazilian market kept the Master mm. System going until like the late '90s or something like that. It was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. It is ridiculous. There are games yeah. on there that you're like, "What? How is this thing?" Mm -hmm. And they're not the same game at all. But right, right. It's but, still cool. Yeah. It is. All right, cool. Question twelve, James. I love the Master here. System. By the way, I'm mm -hmm. a huge fan. Somebody got the chat question right. By the way, I'm just thrilled to point that out. I saw it in the thing earlier. What is the name of this The Jungle Book Groove's Party game title released in North America? What's the name of the... It's not just so Jungle Book Groove Party? Version. What's the North American version? Oof. Groove Party. I don't know. My family's actually from England. I was, like, I was born in England. Um... So I'm trying to think what the U.S. version of Groove would be. Uh, can I say Jungle Party to go and throw him back to the Lion King one? Not Jungle Party. I do like where you're coming <laughs> from. Joe, do you know this one? Dance Party. Yeah. Answer we were looking for was the Jungle Book Rhythm and Groove. That's actually pretty. That's That's a better title. I like that. All right, Joe, you're up for question number 13. How many questions uh, are in this quiz? <laughs> told you it was a big quiz. Oh That's the reason God. why I hadn't had it ready. <laughs> Lordy, all right. All right, I'm now going to show you a screenshot of a video game, mm -hmm. and you have to tell me what video game it is. Okay. Uh, is it Hercules? It is Disney's all right. Hercules. Okay, sweet. We're on the board. Wait, I got right, one. James, more okay, I'm going to show you a screenshot of a game, and you have to tell me what video game it is. All right. What is happening Oof. here? I mean, it looks like uh, Toy Story. I see the sheriff badge in the top left, and there's obviously toys and whatnot. I can't for the life of me. Oh, correct. Genesis. Yeah, there it is. All right, final question. Uh, once again, Joe, I'm going to show you a screenshot, and you have to tell me what video game it's from. Okay. Uh, it's Donald Duck. Is it Quackshot? Quackshot is incorrect. 
Okay. Then the other one that he's in. Uh, is this the, there was that one on the PS one and two, is it going quackers or whatever it was called? Correct. answer we were looking for was Mally Mallet in cold shadow. Wow. What? What is what? That sounds, that looks badass. (laughs) 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 I didn't know there was some Ninja duck game. That looks awesome. I've never heard of it. After 15 questions, we have a Mm -hmm. winner. On three mm. points is Joe, but today's winner with eight points is James. Well done, James. Close. <laughs> oh, we do have a correct answer. After three weeks, Turner has finally done it. Correct answer was Spot Goes to Hollywood. It was a tough one, but we know you guys can get it. Well done. Very good. I still don't get how spots from tops, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so the the first picture, the black and white, was like really messing with me for weeks. Um, you know what I mean? Like I did not understand that. Like like white and black, black and white, black. And white. I'm like I don't get it. I don't get it. But I thought it was the colors. So it makes sense. Like if if they were dogs with spots or something, then you instantly know it. But yeah, no, I, I can see it. Yeah, you should have put like a guy with like leprosy with like big liver. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> well done, though. congratulations, sir. Thank you. What thank other you games have you got to show us today, Jim? So, how much more time do we have? I want to make sure I'm pacing. Uh, Forty-five this out minutes or so. Plenty of time. Right. We go over it. It's all good. All right. Well, we'll uh, we're left off at on the PlayStation Two. So I showed you a bunch of not so good games on the PS2. Uh, the later period ones get a bit better. So I'm going with the original Cars uh, for PS2. Um, a lot of people like Cars 2 uh, better. Uh, that was, I think it's on PS2, but the, it's on PS3 and PSP as well. I prefer the first Cars because the environment's. Uh, so it takes place in Radiator Springs. I don't know if you've seen the movie, but um, Cars 2 is just like a bunch of racetracks and your typical courses. This is cool because you're going through the desert and you're going through uh, all these old towns and, and whatnot. Um, this one stands... Right. Yeah, they're pretty good. The new one is terrible. Cars 3, uh, I think Driven to Win or whatever. Okay, that thing's garbage. What about yeah. um, Rice There's Rahm a PSP or, game I liked a lot. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned that. I, I do have Cars 2 on PSP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, fun. yeah. It is good. It's funny. This is a side-scroller almost. It, it's not uh, your typical 3D behind the back of the car uh, one. Uh, so this is more interesting than it is good. But um, going back to... <laughs> more interesting going back, than good. I have quite a few games like that. Wouldn't <laughs> yeah. get that description in my collection. I'm like... I bought this one because it's just weird. I didn't. It's yeah. not good. It's just like you're a dinosaur that like has a wheelchair and it shoots missiles out of its butt. I don't know. It was, I had to it's it. funny. You, we, I find myself a lot of times having to give that caveat where it's like, if you're like me and you like interesting games or like you want to see like they did a cool mechanic but the game's trash, uh, definitely pick it up. I love games like that, but I have a hard time recommending stuff like that unless people have that same kind of mindset. But um, going back to this Cars, this one is really good because Pixar was heavily involved in this. Uh, Like it has the voice cast, uh, like George Carlin, Paul Newman. um, uh, The other people that did did the voices actually recorded lines for this. Pixar helped with the cut scenes. Uh, There's actually sequences in here that were cut out of the original movie. So they used some like cutting room floor, like storylines and things like that for this actual game. Um, I wish it was just a tiny bit better, but as it goes, like, you know, we were talking about the amount of effort that Disney put in. Uh, this is out of all the PlayStation games, I would say they put the most amount of like muscle and sweat into this one. Uh, the level of investment is very, very cool. So mm-hmm. cars is one. It's cool to hear that there are you know, games out there that, that I always bring up on this show, the, um, Scarface game on PS2, how you watch yeah. the movie. The video game is like a sequel, and you get yeah. that 
full experience. That's cool to hear that there's there are some Disney games out there on the PS2. Yeah, and it's funny. It's random, like the ones that they actually decide to put like a whole lot of effort and take seriously. Um, but I guess the Pixar team, you know, John Lasseter and uh, all those guys. Well, John Lasseter is disgraced now at this point, so we can't we can't bring him up. But um, is he for Netflix now or something? I don't know. Actually, I don't know what happened to him. I'm pretty sure he's doing something for somebody somewhere. Right. I could be right. wrong. I, I, I like, I know a little about Disney, but I don't follow mm-hmm. it like deeply or anything like that, but I do know some. So, so that, uh, yeah, that card game is kind of the high watermark on the PlayStation 2 era. And just in terms of production, uh, you know, the uh, amount of he effort. Discovery. Yeah. Oh, he does? That's what wow. the Speed Killer said. So he's doing all right. So that was uh, a THQ. It's funny. They, I think three, three of the games I've shown so far for PS2 are, are THQ games. Here's another one is Ratatouille. Now, this one isn't great. The environments are awesome, and it looks really cool. It doesn't play all that well. Like, it's I, the controls. My THQ guess was solid. Yeah. Bullshit. Yeah. T- TDK. <laughs> The one TDK game uh, anyone has ever talked about, or probably that they made, right? Yeah, they made Blake VHS tapes or something, or kick his sets or something. That well, I think Man Ratatouille game, is an yeah. interesting one because the PS2 version is really cheap. But if you want yeah. it on the PS3, you're looking at thirty to forty dollars. Is it really Quite interesting to me? Yeah, there's wow. a few of the Disney games like that, like the Shrek games, oh. were all quite expensive on the PS3 and um, the Toy Story. Mania 3 is like a yeah. $6 game over here. and There's a few of them that are quite expensive. It's interesting when a licensed game takes off like that because you expect them just to be in bargain bins and all that. So the ones that actually turn into valuable or you know collector's items is, is pretty interesting. I, I think 50% of the reason is because collectors want it and majority yeah. of the people owning these games were kids. When I was collecting these games, I found them all the time. But yeah. finding one in good condition, complete, with no scratches, was the hard part. The instruction manual, anything like that, yeah. Um, oh, this one's been chewed. <laughs> right. Or, you know, the, there's like peanut butter and jelly on them or, or something like that. Um, <laughs> or even just like opening the manual and it's been written over because a kid owned it and was in love with it and wanted it right in their game. Yeah, it's funny. I actually, uh, I used to hate that. Now I kind of like that because you'll see like kids, some kid drew like sketches or like, you know, like a, a open one up one time and like some kid drew a stick figure of his mom and dad and there's like a heart next to it. And I'm like, this is awesome. Like some, you know, who, I wish I could give the, find track this person down and give it back to him because uh, it, it's a nice memento. But um, yeah, so the, the Ratatouille, it, it, I want this game to be amazing because I really actually like the movie a lot. Uh, it's one of my favorite Disney movies, but uh, it's a case of environment's great, uh, all that uh, looks looks good. It's just not that much fun to play, unfortunately. Um, the most interesting thing about this, though, is if you see on the cover, it says there's a voucher for a free Ratatouille movie ticket. I don't know if you guys remember that era where, like, DVDs, like if there was a... Uh, like a new predator movie coming out or a new sequel coming out. Sometimes the DVDs would have a free movie ticket in them or something. And some of these licensed games used to have come with a movie ticket. This one, like it still has the movie ticket. Oh, nice. nice. In the package. Nice, yeah. yeah. Which that is pretty funny. Really in desirable. The, like the hardcore scene, there's a full subset of all the games with the movies and to get all the games with all yeah. the movie tickets, some of them are so hard to find because it's mm-hmm. like, you know, wanted to go see the movie. Is extremely like, rare, and then actually like the Matrix, TV. right? It's like the Matrix one, isn't that? Because everyone yeah. went to see the fuck. Everyone went to see the Matrix. Right, right. <laughs> they were like, "Yes, I'll go see it again." Uh, pretty this sure is, that's uh, I could be wrong. It's pretty funny though. This expires August 29th, two thousand seven, <laughs> and it says, um, "So pay to the order to the offer authorized movie theater maximum of seven dollars and fifty cents." So it only only went up to seven fifty back back when this. You wouldn't get a trailer for seven fifty. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? So that's Ratatouille. So I'm going to end the PlayStation Two era on what I consider it, it's one of the few hidden gems uh, on on my list today. But and this, no one's more surprised than me. 
So G-Force on That's the PlayStation oh, 2. I thought you were about to show Kim Possible. No, I, you know what? Kim Possible has gotten some attention, so I don't. I didn't feel like I needed to wheel that one out. But uh, G-Force, I don't hear get talked about very often. Now, the movie is not a good movie. Like I don't. I don't know anyone who remembers this thing. But uh, it's a case of a licensed game that should that has no business being good. Like this game should not be good. That's but cool. Awesome. It, it's a. Uh, I can't find cool... it. I have it on PS3. It's yeah, really yeah, me too. Me too. The uh, the PS3 version's better. Like the lighting actually is really good on the uh, on the PS3 one. And it, it again, it's I... a PS3 game that isn't easy to find and isn't yeah. in that bottom. It's in that like twenty to thirty dollar range. Yeah, but it's fun. It, I mean, you don't great graphics. It, it looks great graphics. gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, great lighting, animation. It's fun. Like. Uh, kind of inventive you got like a little i think like a little robot mosquito sidekick that can go through air vents and like do some recon for you um levels are great uh the action's really good like you've got guns and whatnot like the shooting's really good in it um but yeah just very odd game to be as good as it is um and i don't i'm glad you guys have it uh, but yeah i just don't get it here don't hear people chatting about that one very often it it wasn't one that was recommended or anything like that. It was just when oh. I was into buying PS3 games and I was going through the library. Like I was just like, "This looks dope." Yeah, I'm like it looks. It just looked really good. So I just I grabbed it because I just it it looked amazing. I yeah, I, it looked like a PS4 game to me. I thought it looked like really, the graphics were incredible. So. You know what's funny about the PS3 one too is it come. I it has yeah, 3D, 3D mode glasses. on it. Yeah. yeah, it comes with 3D glasses. It looks terrible, but it's like it was in that very small window of time when PS3 games like came with a 3D mode uh, as an option. And it's um, even harder to find the version with the glasses, of course. Yeah, I bet. I bet. There's some dude in Rhode Island who put up the PlayStation 3 3D TV for 50 bucks. On marketplace, and I'm wow. like, God damn it, man! Why you got to be in Rhode Island? I am not going to Rhode Island for this <laughs> fucking thing. If it was like, much, eh? <laughs> it is. It's definitely too far for that. Yeah, it, it, it's not fifty bucks anymore. If I drive to Rhode Island, let's put it that mm-hmm. way. It's the deal ain't so good. But if it was even remotely close, oh god, I would have bought it immediately. That's funny you mentioned that up. I uh, mentioned bring that up because I'm a uh, I'm. On top of being like a video game fan, I just love technology, and I we- I love weird technology. And yeah. that PlayStation that that PlayStation TV is just a very odd anomaly in the uh, like in the PlayStation's history that they made this little small uh, 3D TV specifically to push the 3D agenda because they thought it was gonna take off or, or something like that. Like the thought process just behind like UMDs, baby. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or the um, I don't know if you guys get the PlayStation TV, which I have, I have a box version of here. Nice. Where it's like you know the 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 ideas that that went into this and that they packaged first Nintendo it up Switch. And, That's the first right, Nintendo right. Switch. Vita was Basically, the first yeah. Nintendo Switch. Yeah. And these but, days uh, you're looking at like four hundred dollars if you want to find one of those things because it's yeah. just, what they can do are pretty amazing, especially if you own a Vita. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. See, I'd rather mo- I'd rather get one of those and mod it, and throw all my games on it and play with a controller than play with the Vita at this point. Yeah, you know, I brought up the Vita. Like, it's good. Like I mentioned, it's good for you know classic PS One games and PSP games. Uh, That's what I use it for. I play PlayStation One games on my Vita. Yeah, but um, I don't know. I just I never really like the thumbsticks on it all that much. Uh, the D pad. I don't know. There's something about. Uh, I know you can get gr- grips for it. I've got grips for it, but. Just never big fan of just the ergonomics of this thing or like playing on it. Never felt right, well, they were the same way about the PSP. I always, felt yeah, yeah, the... same. Oh, I just hate the screeching of the PSP, the disc. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, when you press the button in, it feels like there's a big gap between the button. I don't yep. like that. Funny you mentioned the uh, the PSP. I do have uh, just a couple uh, things here. So I showed off uh, Cars 2 already. And then one, I think you mentioned Toy Story 3 just now. Uh, the one really good game on the PSP is Toy Story 3. Um, mm-hmm. Now, it's a version of the one that's on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. Great, great game. This is one of those, you know, I'd say a, a, a top tier um, 
Disney game, especially this era. It's really, really good. There's like an, uh, there's a, the story mode, which is really good. It, it's great, great animation, great levels, feels really good. Uh, it's got the to uh, toy box mode too, which is sort of like this open world place where you can like make your own town and kind of walk around. So it's kind of two games in one. Um, this PSP version though, is just all the action elements. And I mean, it's almost as good as the uh, PS3 version. This is really, I think this one, the PSP one's cheaper, obviously, because nobody wants to deal with those, uh, with these discs, but um, really cool option. If you have a PSP and you want to play a, a great Disney game, uh, the Toy Story 3 game is great. Mm -hmm. And then last one, I just, I don't know. I've got a, a sealed copy of Tron the movie <laughs> on uh, for the, my PSP. I love it. <laughs> which is um yeah ridiculous like i, I love don't know tron the, i love tron too um, the original tron i love and i am a big fan of the remit the new one too like i don't know i yeah. guess a lot of people don't like it i thought it was great i think i thought i, I, thought, I thought the opening was ridiculous mm -hmm. like the, the yeah. whole like the beginning with the kid in the building and jumping out that all that was like okay this is dumb but everything after that is fantastic like actually in the tron thing like i loved it um and you know of course it's got jeff bridges in it which yeah already like you've won me over like sign me up uh, yeah, and i Tron's... heard they were thinking about making another one and they it just never happened right like i would no, like it got announced what last week or the week before oh it did um, yeah yeah oh, i think it's I... coming out i don't yeah, i can google it real quick but yeah the third tron is coming Good. out soon it should have. It, it it's should've. called Aries. Yeah, it's Jared oh. Leto's in it. Um, no, that's not good. No, I'm just kidding. He what? was in, uh, what was he in? Blade Runner 2? Blade Runner, yeah. So yeah. October 10th, 2025. So we're getting it next next fall. I'm excited yeah. for that. That's cool. Yeah. I like those movies. They were fun. They were cool movies. Yeah. And they, I think they look fantastic. And I like Daft Punk. So, yeah, it was all good. Ahead of its time, too. Like, this is in that weird era, that early 80s Disney era before. Um, um, oh, that movie had the, back in the heyday. That, I mean, if, that, if you're a video game fan, that was a huge deal. Huge though. game. Yeah, yeah. But, Especially uh, if you like Atari and stuff. You're into that type of game. Yeah, but it was just like a, a giant flop at the time. Like, that early era, uh, early, early 80s Disney was like, they were going through an odd time. Really transitional time. Oh, they but, made a lot of weird movies. Yeah. 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 Black Cauldron, which action. I think we talked about. Yeah. That's a good movie. Um, so I was actually, I don't mean to, I don't want to go too off topic, but, but I, one of the sure. things is like, didn't Disney recently announce they were like no longer making Blu rays and they were ending their like Blu ray so. service and all that stuff? Yeah. So like when yeah. I heard that, I actually I went out and got a few. I bought like Flight of the Navigator, I ordered Black mm -hmm. Cauldron. Uh, I'm trying to get like some of the DVDs that I'm just like worried will be rare but i also at the same time i'm like somebody will put out more disney dvds it's too profitable like somebody will like even if disney doesn't want yeah. to do it like they'll let sony make them or somebody make them i'm assuming i just think so. you would hope so i don't know these days with physical media of movies and stuff i don't know either but that's just uh Oh wait, Sony is taking over disney blu-ray okay oh, so yeah. exactly because yeah mm -hmm. so that makes sense to me um because it's I know they got like, canned in Australia, though. There's no more Disney Blu rays being done in Australia, which is kind of sad. I don't give a yeah. shit about that. I just... <laughs> yeah, it's kind of sad, too. Because do you remember, Joe, do you remember growing up as a kid and like a new Disney release was such a big deal, like getting a Latin yeah. on VHS and those, it was those old deal. school, like those puffy cases that they used to come in? Mm -hmm. the, yeah, yeah. the big clamshell, the big yeah. clamshell. That's it. They're, they're the nostalgic ones these days. People want the yeah. big clamshell case. Yeah, uh, no, I, I, like Rugrats, and it was orange. I remember yeah. like being five years old. I remember that. <laughs> I feel like we were all hyped for every Disney movie that came out up until like Hunchback and Notre Dame. Yeah, yeah, that's and it. That, and that's when it started to keep peter off for my family but yeah. that's also because we kind of got a little older so i mean i'm sure mulan and there was a few other movies that are pocahontas and stuff that people liked but for us it was like hunchback mm -hmm. was like kind of like the last one that we were really super excited for yeah that's uh it's that, we didn't like about... that very much either to be honest with you no no it wasn't crazy like little movie. mermaid aladdin and beauty and the beast bangers baby they i know that was insane all three of those movies crushed 
like yeah everybody like, was singing all the songs like it was they were huge yeah yeah getting those three in a row were uh gigantic. Oh, Lion King too. Lion King yeah you know yeah. about that um, but you're right. And it's funny that the sort of another bad period of Disney or like l- less popular period of Disney started right when the PlayStation one dropped, uh, too. So just the, the properties that they had to draw from weren't as good as what, what came before it. That, it, it Pixar became their whole Pixar, thing yeah. that took over. And those were yeah. great though. Like I do love toy story and monsters, yeah, Inc. Incredible. and all those early movies, incredibles. I really like that. Finding movie. Nemo. Yeah. yeah. Finding Nemo's classic. Um, yep. got a real quick uh, DreamWorks. That's true. Yeah. Yep. Uh, quick question for you guys: ha- Has anyone ever watched a full movie on a UMD on their on their PSP? I have only when I was on a plane, and it was like yeah. 2013. <laughs> it was still a relevant time. To yeah, be like, this is cool. I wouldn't do it these days. Yeah, I only did it one time. Uh, uh, same thing. I was traveling to visit family in England. And it was all I had. I mean, you didn't, you know, you didn't have video iPods even back then. Like that was the best thing you had. And it's like I burned all my batteries on the the plane flight because you didn't have chargers on planes yeah, back yeah. then. Or and then you get like, to you're in another yep. country and the charger doesn't fit in the world. Right. Yeah. Same thing. So I couldn't. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't play my PSP or charge it up. So I got that one use out of it. So I could watch yeah, I didn't Office. I have it on the flight home. Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So that. Uh, so we're transitioning. We did PS2. We did PSP quickly. Uh, PS3. We've already talked about DuckTales, uh, which came out. Um, but there are a couple notable games here. So going back to Tron real quick. Tron I Evolution. To you find this. Yeah, yeah. And this is another one of the. This is one of those 3D enabled games uh, we were just mentioning. Uh, Tron's a pretty good game, man. It's uh, yeah. you can, it's got PS PlayStation Move support. Like they were trying to do a lot with this. Not a lot of people lo- loved this game. Uh, got it, you know, it wasn't super warmly received, but I always really liked it because I like the property a lot. And they did put a whole lot of effort into making this thing uh, good. Like some 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 time and, and effort went into to making this thing look good. Uh, so I do. I'm a fan of Tron Evolution. If you can find it, I think it's and you're a fan of the series. It's really cool to be in that world. Sound mm-hmm. effects are great. Like the graphics are cool. Uh, they did a really what I think. I think they did a really good job with this one. I played the Bollywood version of that, which is RA one the video game. Yeah, that was the, that was an experience. And a half. <laughs> um, coming after that, we've got I guess what would count. Uh, I would count it as a hidden gem a little bit. So this isn't based on one of the best movies, but we've got Brave for PS3, which I think is very cool because it's a twin stick shooter like robotron or smash tv really like, like that era yeah it's, oh, it's so like play... one of my fa- it's my second favorite genre shmups it's so like... awesome man yeah i always say that like shmups are like the most attractive woman you've ever seen in your life <laughs> and, twi- and twin stick shooters are her like slightly less attractive sister but you'd be totally cool with her you know yeah I mean? so it's, totally it's cool weird <laughs> i mean the Whoever led, whoever greenlit Brave being a twin stick shooter, like hats off to whoever did that because it's a major property that they shoehorned into like a genre that not a lot of people do flat out. But like Disney especially doesn't make games like this. I think that's why it's uh, so unique. The environments are great, good graphics, a- action packed, like just very cool. A little bit more violent than uh, you would expect from a Disney game. I'll check it out. Uh, I love twin stick shooter, so if it is good, I'll, I'll absolutely check it out. Yeah, man, I, I I really do like Brave a lot. I think it's uh, underrated, and it's something people don't talk about very much. Um, so it's funny we're we're closing out the PlayStation Three era, and we're kind of closing the book on Disney games for a while because they launched Disney Infinity, which came out, I believe, in 2013. So Disney Infinity, I mean, for the, f- the people who might not know about it, it was one of those toys to life games. So it's, it's like Skylanders. Skylanders. Yeah. And uh, well, Lego Dimensions. Um, so you had one of these, which is like the portal, they call it. And you put your little action figures on the portal and uh, suck them into the game. And you play them uh, in different levels. So I've got, this is the starter pack. You got Sully from... 
Monsters Inc., Monsters University. You got a Jack Sparrow. And then you got Mr. Incredible from The Incredibles. That was in like the starter pack. And These things are going to be 1,000 million percent insanely expensive in the future, by the way. Yeah. Even if they're dirt cheap now, I would bet a million dollars there will mm -hmm. be people who are adults who are like, I want to get all the Skylanders. I loved that game when I was a yeah. kid. And those things are going to be so valuable. The mate that just spent five hundred dollars on one Skyland the last night. I still can't. <laughs> <laughs> no, Andy drove like three hours to get it as well. I mean, right, are they already that expensive? Are they already that? The, like, the, oh, there are like five hundred dollar plus Skylands. Oh, I thought those things were still cheap. All right, never mind. I guess that's already a thing. It's funny is I don't get it because like. I understand. I like the Toys to Life concept. I think that's cool. But thinking about when back when I was a kid, these things aren't articulated. Like I wouldn't really necessarily want to play with this thing. Mm -mm. Like the game aspect is cool, but like I don't know about the toy in real life part of it. Like I don't. I just don't think that. You know, I'm, I I'm a lot older than the target demographic, but I don't think this is fun necessarily because they're stuck in like a pose, and you can't really do a whole lot with them. But um. Going back to the game, yeah, it was interesting. For that time period, Disney just didn't make other games. I mean, there's a couple of exceptions uh, on handhelds and whatnot, but sort of all of their gaming efforts went into Disney Infinity. So they just took all of their properties, whether it was Cars, Lone Ranger, Star Wars, Marvel, and they just made levels for Disney Infinity. And it kind of became like a catch-all for all of their gaming. So this was basically for three, four years, this was Disney gaming on the PlayStation and uh, Xbox and whatever, that generation. But you're saying that came out in 2013. The yeah. PS3 had three of them. And the PS3 yeah. was almost dead in 2013. So like, I know. they really started to milk that system. Seriously, dude. And there's a couple other. I mean, there, I've got, that was 1.0. I've got 2.0 on the PS4. And then there's a 3.0. And so it's cool. Like, uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean especially is, like, kind of the best Pirates game, almost. You know, there's uh, there's that really awful PS2 one that we, we talked about that Bethesda made, which is trash. And then we've got Lego Pirates of the Caribbean. Bring up some LEGO games. Fabulous. Like, that's a really, really good game. Uh, but the, the Pirates on this is, like, awesome. It's really, really good. Um, the problem with this one, though, is... So you play in a, a couple problems. You play enough of these and it's like, okay, I've got, you know, uh, I just, I'm, I'm playing Star Wars now in Disney Infinity. All the, it doesn't matter what property it is. They all kind of play exactly the same. Like the artwork is kind of the same. They all kind of feel the same. So you're not really getting like a bunch of different games uh, crammed into one game. You're just getting this, but it's Star Wars. Or you're getting this, but it's, you know, um, uh, Avengers or, or whatever. It would be cool so if you're a kid and you don't realize what's going on. Yeah, yeah. But it's not like back in the day where it's like, you know, um, Hercules was way different from Finding Nemo, which is way different from Incredibles and all that. They're all just very unique, different games. It's just Compared like to Kingdom one Hearts, game. It's very well yeah. it's unique and it was its own thing. And uh, the thing about it too, which is like unbelievably frustrating. So these games, you can't if you're doing the pirates level, you can't bring Mr. Incredible into the pirates level. Like they, it just doesn't work. You can only play pirates uh, characters in the pirates levels. You can only do Incredibles characters in the Incredibles levels and so on. So it really like, it took half the fun out of it. Like it would be cool to be yeah. like, I would love to be Donald Duck in Tron world or something like that. Mm. But they just didn't let you do any of that stuff, which was, um, like super frustrating. Another frustrating thing too is, so you've got these level uh, figures, icons, whatever you want to call this thing. The levels only work for specific games. So the levels designed for Infinity 1 only work on Infinity 1. They don't work on Infinity 2 and the, the ones for Infinity 3 are only for Infinity 3. So it's like, I mean, it gets really complicated and confusing especially for kids like trying to convince parents to buy all this stuff like it's not quite cross-platform uh which which is weird and i think that's probably 
I mean, they, they pulled the support from it. I don't know if they just stopped being profitable or they just saw the writing on the wall in terms of kids not wanting to shell out money for this stuff or, you know, it could be like whatever. They hit a saturation point and then just pulled, pulled the plug on it. Uh, but yeah, there's, it, it's just kind of odd in terms of a, um, a major media outlet, like having video game, video game, video game, and then just a chunk of time stopping making all video games except one game. Um, you tried to rock star and it didn't work. Yeah. Yeah. Really did, odd model for them. And honestly, they never recovered from that or they just, they never got the wheels spinning again. Uh, because, you know, I'm looking at my stack of games here, and after Disney Infinity, they kind of stopped making games based on in- individual movies. Um, you know, the, you, don't, you don't get a, you know, a game based on, you know, whatever, Frozen 2 or Big Hero 6 or all the other movies that have come since, Coco or Encanto and, and whatnot. Oh, I'll count that with Lego games. You get oh, they Lego had, games um, that do movies these days. Didn't they have like How to I Train was... Your Dragon? Didn't they have How to Train Your Dragon games? Oh, wait, no, that's, that's not that. Yeah, but that was Just DreamWorks. Dreamworks. Damn it. Yeah. yeah, so that was the one That one asterisk is they did make some of those, but Lego made them. Like Disney mm-hmm. themselves weren't hands-on anymore. So really, since about 2017, all we've gotten really are, you know, hopping over to the PS4, we've gotten... Lego Marvel, uh, which is an awesome game, like, but it's, you know, it, and then we've got what Lego Force Awakens, another awesome game. That's a great game. I bought that one. But, uh, oh, and, no, I, no, I bought the Skywalker side. Yeah, so that I one's really good. Whole... Lego Hobbit, you got Lord of the Rings. Yeah, oh, but, man. uh, it's just funny to see the drop off, like, looking at, you know, uh, all the titles, uh, the spines for all of them. It's like, movie 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 disney 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 and then since then ps4 ps5 it's just been star wars and marvel games basically and there's a a lego incredibles is the one uh, that's a bit different but like basically all they've been cranking out for you know 20 2004 24 uh almost 10 years uh, at this point is uh star wars and marvel games and they just stopped making like disney games uh which is interesting which is a huge mistake because, you know, Disney, you know, it's like one of the biggest market shares in entertainment, period. Games are more yeah. popular than movies, TV, everything. Like, I mean, I'm sure their parks make a ton of money, but like it's a huge mm-hmm. gap in their like plan if they're not making games. Like, that's wild to me. Yeah. Which is why I feel like they are like they trying to get back in it with Dreamlight Valley and stuff like that but again they're look what they're doing they're trying to like invest into more like one mm-hmm. live servicey type thing that's just, that's just what everyone's want, trying to do these days mm-hmm. everybody wants to have a fortnight everybody wants to have this thing that everybody plays forever and it gives them money forever and it's like i don't know i don't think it's the way to go it, it is crazy though because the games sell themselves if, yeah if yeah, yeah. disney put a game with mickey mouse on the front cover it's gonna sell as well as a mario game like without that's prior to it being good or not. It's oh, well, didn't they? The they character. didn't make a new um, game. Didn't they make some new Disney Mickey game or something like that? But it was like a platformer, and there was like no. Um, I I I was excited. I remember looking. Yeah. at it. I thought it was going to be like a new Castle of Illusion type game, and I it's was called excited. Land of Illusion. It's on the. It's on the Switch. I have it on the Switch. I don't. I think you can get it on PS4. I, I forget though. I think I don't know. I don't know. I think mm-hmm. I've seen it on the Switch, but um, yeah. It it didn't look. I don't know. It just looked. It looked. It looked okay to me, but like it. It wasn't the same vibe at all. Yeah. Like it did. Like as far as like was still like there's like not a lot of monsters. There's like really no like combat or anything. It's like mm-hmm. more just like a puzzly puzzle game where you control like I think called multiple characters. If I'm mistake, I remember looking at it and just being like, eh. I was a little meh about it, but I don't know. I haven't tried it so. I don't know yeah, it it, it looks good, but it doesn't play great. Like it, it's more like it feels like a quality product, but it just I don't. It's really not all that fun to play. So that's the problem with that. But yeah, I mean, you, you know, you, you look at what we talked about today, and it's like Finding Nemo was not a good game, but like I mean, I I would take 
10 Finding Nemo's right now rather than just the kind of stuff that, uh, these days. At least they took a chance and were releasing uh, tie-ins and all that kind of stuff. And then when they're doing that with every movie, yeah. like G-Force, one of them is bound to be a great hidden gem <laughs> game. Right. But uh, that's not to say there's nothing good. So um, going back, this is early PS4 uh, days. Um, yeah, Marvel Super Heroes, which is like... It's not just one of the best Lego games, but it's like a really, really good Marvel game. And um, I was wary to add a lot of Star Wars and Marvel stuff, but I figured I would include anything that came after Disney bought Marvel and Disney bought Star Wars because there's definitely a a vibe to them that feels a bit more Disney-ish. But this Lego Marvel uh, superheroes is great. Great, 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 great. The Avenger one's really good as well. Yeah, yeah, really, really good. Um, it feels really good. The world is great. Like you get to play, it's almost a better version of Disney infinity because you get to play as all the different characters and the gameplay is um, really interesting. Missions are really good. Story is good. Uh, got an original story and um, yeah, it's kind of perfect. It's like really good. It's funny. Uh, it's a good platform for the superheroes. Like some, there's some Lego games that just fit the property really well. Um, you know, the Lego Indiana Jones games aren't my favorite. Like, I don't think that's a great, the greatest of, of pairings. But Marvel in, uh, really fits the Lego, like, license and uh, the gameplay really well. So they really... Oh, I'd say Star Wars an awesome job. Well. Yeah, um, yeah. The, actually, my favorite one is the 2007 release of the Star Wars, the completion pack of all the original yeah. PS2 ones. But on the PS3, the modern graphics and the trophies. Mm-hmm. It's such an amazing game, that yeah, it's one of the best, you know, like that Lego Marvel is one of the best Marvel games. Those Lego Star Wars games are almost some of the best uh, Star Wars games that have ever come out. Like, they're just really, really good. It's funny that, you know, Lego can do a better job of Disney games than a lot of Disney games, you know, <laughs> like their own. Hey, James, one thing I wanted to bring up that we got on the PS3, we got a lot of kart racing games. Yeah. We got like a Madagascar kart racing game. Mm-hmm. Uh, an Ice Age kart racing game? Madagascar is DreamWorks, I think. And I think Ice Age... Oh. Is Ice Age DreamWorks or is that something else? Yeah, I get confused with DreamWorks and Disney. Oh, it's all right. No, <laughs> no, it's easy. But uh, Big kids' games to me, I put them all under the same <laughs> category. <laughs> but yeah, the... Um, there was another good cart, uh, Toy Story cart game on the PS1, just real quick. That's a great game. Uh, I don't have a copy of that on me right now, but that is uh, that is a really good game. And on PS5, they dropped that... Did, have you guys seen that new Disney Speedway game? Or whatever it's called. Oh, I've heard a, of it. Yeah, yeah free, it. free to play. Um, let me look up the name. Oh, uh, no, I did watch this. It looked really good, too. It's actually great. It's... Um, uh yeah it's a free download and then uh, i think you have to pay for extra um it's called disney Speedstorm, and i was really i was just happy to have a new disney game to play but uh impressed by the mechanics of it like they they weren't lazy with the the driving controls and all that for the levels like it's actually worth checking out if you guys haven't tried that one out yet no, I, I think I was hoping it would get an actual physical release, but if it's free yeah. to play, probably not. <laughs> probably not. Give it a test. It's, it's, it's not really yeah. free to play. If I don't they think they're going to print a disc out if they can give them out for free. Yeah, exactly. It's like free to experience. If you want the full experience, you've got to pay. <laughs> but maybe it's a oh. good sign of things to come. You know, that Dreamlike Valley for all its saw. flaws. And then... Uh, Speedstorm for all you know it, its flaws too. Maybe this is at least they're making something. You know, at least they're putting out product again, uh, which is good. I honestly like from a pure just business standpoint, like it would be crazy for them not to make more games. Mm-hmm. They have such powerful characters and franchises with brand recognizability in the games, and like 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 you know. Uh, and again, like they could do another cart race, so they could do this, but but they should do like actual, like you know, unique games, like mm-hmm. that. Especially if they um, tried to appeal to like us and like that, like that that whole um, 
block of shows that we were talking about, like the Chippendales and uh, uh, DuckTales and Darkwing mm-hmm. Duck and blah, blah, blah. If they like try to bring some of that back, there's money for you there at Disney. If you yeah. make new Darkwing Duck game or a new mm-hmm. DuckTales game or a new... Make my money. <laughs> yeah, dude. If like if they announced <laughs> DuckTales 3, you, you don't think everyone would be like, oh, shit. Yeah, I, I get that, son. <laughs> you know, like, it would just like... I would. And it doesn't like, have to be a modern game. Make it with updated graphics exactly the same as it was. That's yeah, no, yeah. no, no. I, I don't want it to be like a Souls like, please. Like, just make it like <laughs> on a pogo stick jumping around the arena. No, I don't want any, I don't want it to be a rogue like either or anything like that. Just make it just to make a 2D game, like a good old fashioned game. Yeah, they could just go back to making simple games based well. on the properties yeah yeah i don't know what they're doing right now man i, I think they're taking i think they're reevaluating everything sort of post covid and all that stuff i think they're and the a lot of their ips haven't done great like that new indiana jones movie dial of destiny it came out last mm-hmm. year under underperformed mm-hmm. um the star wars that last um the last star wars uh, trilogy First one was a big hit. Second one was a big hit. And that third one, though, is tra- like garbage. I hate that last one. Well, I mean, somehow Palpatine returned. Yeah. <laughs> In the, the opening got. crawl. Yeah. Mess you got. It Just, yeah. The way they handled, I mean, I could talk about Star Wars for a long time, and I don't, I don't want to, but like the, the whole Snoke to right. Palpatine thing mm-hmm. was a mess. Just a mess. Well, it didn't make any sense. I mean, they're obviously like JJ Abrams was trying to like shoehorn like uh, you know a, a, a different plot into it than the first two movies had set up. Like if they had been slowly setting up the Emperor coming back for the entire sure. time, yeah. cool. But it introduced in the opening crawl, like, hey guys, Emperor's back, and it's like you you introduce this major major plot point uh, just in text, and that's like. It just comes out in of the third film, not even yeah. in the first one. Like he's back. Right. Like, oh, yeah. he is third film. Okay. Yep. Yeah, it was. It was. It was. Um, God, I just hate to say it. It's kind of I just unprofessional. Yeah, <laughs> unprofessional. Not unprofessional. Like, and if, yeah. for for a Star Wars franchise, yeah, I, you know, yeah, I don't know. But hey, that's it. I don't think letting multiple directors work on a trilogy is just no. to, in 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 any and any sort of yeah makes sense i think if jj made them all it would have been good i think if ryan johnson made them all they mm-hmm. would have been better like they yeah. hands down if one because ah uh, yeah i don't know what you're talking about Joe. and if peter jackson made them they would have been the best oh yeah <laughs> and they would have yeah, been yeah, like you're... three hours longer than they needed to be we would have extended editions we would have <laughs> no, he would have done like a a free movie sequel on each of them, like the Hobbit. <laughs> right. But I, I think it, I think the stuff like that made them scared. Uh, so you know, Star Wars underperforming, Indiana Jones underperforming, and then mm-hmm. the recent Marvel movies taking a downturn. Like people are losing interest, so they can't really bank on their you know longtime properties like that. So I think they're taking a wait and see approach to whatever's next and. Part of that too is uncertainty in terms of gaming habits. Like, you know, you know, are, are people going to jump on board the PS6? You know, are kids going to care about the Switch too? You know, is, is there going to be another Xbox? That kind of stuff. Like, they're just kind of waiting to see what where the market goes before they invest too much time in something that might not have a great return on investment. It's true. But it is interesting because these days a lot of movies make significantly more than sorry, a lot of video games make significantly mm-hmm. more than movies. Yeah. Look, if we look at Grand Theft Auto Five, like no movie mm-hmm. comes close to sorry, six. No movie comes yeah. close to the budget that's spent. And that's going to make significantly amount more money than any movie has ever had in the yeah. past. Just like GTA five did. And I'm sure Disney and all these other movies companies are looking at this going oh there's more money in video games right now mm-hmm. we've got all these characters that we own you know that we can do something here. that's the reskin we need we need the gta 5 disney <laughs> reskin and that's the same answer like you guys said you laugh joe but if they did up. that it would, that, yeah. would, that would be pretty bad <laughs> Die, motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
Oh my god. Oh, I hope they figure it out and I hope they do it because it's like the I mean, like you said, all these great characters, great stories, great environments. They could do so much with it. I just I just don't know what's if they they're very smart about what they invest their money in and I just don't for whatever reason it's not worth it to them right now or they're just not you know they're more interested in revenue they're getting from the parks or the movies or whatnot so who knows yeah speed oh. killer named it on the hit it on the head the simpsons hit and run was a gta clone done in yeah, a true. kids friendly version it's yeah not yeah possible. that's too, oh yeah wasn't well they also wasn't there a lego lego undercover was basically kids yeah. gta wasn't in a way though. yeah so it's not it isn't that uh, crazy of a concept so mm-hmm. um yeah um, but going back to Star Wars real quick, that's sort of the next game on my list. So we did Lego Marvel and then uh, Lego Star Wars Force Awakens. Now, whatever, you know, you think of the movie, uh, I liked it OK, uh, but this game is great. Uh, it kind of changed up the Lego formula a little bit in that it's more the camera's closer and more behind the shoulder. It's more like Resident Evil 4 style where you're over you know, third person like that. Uh, it's a really cool viewpoint. It looks beautiful and there's a lot of action in it, like a lot of lightsaber fights, a lot of gun fights. Um, another one of those that it's a, it's a great Lego game and a great license game, great Star Wars game. Uh, really, really super cool. I, I love, definitely love that one. And then next up, so we already talked about Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts 3 chronologically came out after um lego star wars and as we we kind of talked about it a bit but um awesome game awesome characters awesome locations kind of grindy and kind of unfortunately i hate to say it it just lost my interest a little bit you know it it's almost like it's a throwback to a different era um kind of mechanically gameplay wise like it just not it, it, it feels like it's using the whole like it's not turn-based system, but it would be yeah. like using a turn-based system in a game where you're used to playing an action RPG or something. Yeah, very weird. Like it's funny. It's almost it reminds me of Fallout Four. I don't know if you guys had this feeling with Fallout Four, where it was a game in a series that I absolutely loved, but I can't put my finger on why I don't really like Fallout Four all that much. Like there's just something about it, and I get a similar vibe with Kingdom Hearts Three. I, it's got all the elements. Every, I should love this game. But I just, uh, yeah, just never got a, got its claws in me. Uh, I've heard I've, many people mention that about Fallout 4, and I'm yeah. so grateful that it was my first Fallout game because yeah. I put in like 300 hours, <laughs> did everything. The, the yep. base building in that game is yeah. up there with like the best base building experiences I've ever had. And, yeah, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's like, it's great. It looks good. Great it plays, DLC. plays good. Yeah, all that. It's just, I don't know what it what it is. It just never... Um, I didn't get obsessed with it like the others, and it wasn't because I was sick of it. It was also it. one of the first games I played on a modern system. Like I yeah. just got the Xbox One, and it was the first right. RPG I had. So for me, it was like, oh, I was just playing this PS3 <laughs> game with you know yellow graphics, and now I'm yeah. playing like Fallout World that looks amazing. Right, right. I totally understand. You know, it's kind of when stuff hits you too. Uh, a lot of times, like whatever age you were at, or what was going on in your life or all sorts of stuff that can make something I've mean tried to three you. or four times to play New Vegas and for me yeah. it's like this would have been cool 15 years ago but it looks uh-huh. outdated and it hasn't got a few mechanics that I got used to in Fallout 4 and I just couldn't mm-hmm. get into it yeah it's a tough one to go back to I loved it at the time uh, absolutely loved it but yeah it's uh, I, I agree it's tar- it, and it really is the mechanics uh, that are hard to go back to with a game like that it's not the gameplay or you know, story. Yeah, Oblivion, whatnot. you could say the exact same thing for when Oblivion came out. Yeah, that was yeah. groundbreaking. But it was like, you know, launch title Xbox 360, PS3, 2007, 2008. Yeah. You know, we play Skyrim and then you go back and you're like, oh, this isn't Skyrim. This is cool, but it's not Skyrim cool. Oh, do you, the worst to, uh, you ever go back and play uh, part three, uh, Morrowind? Like that game, like is impossible for me to play. Like it is just clung. It, I mean, everything is there. It plays exactly the same. It's really cool, great story. But just, world. Yeah, all that. But just it wasn't 
the technology wasn't there and like the ones that came afterwards did what it did so much better that it's just uh really difficult to go back to yeah um, stop going back in time when you lose quality of life improvements like yeah. really bad you're like oh you can't fast travel in this game oh shit yep. you know like oh you have to manage your in oh like there's like certain mechanics like uh overburdened any game where you can pick up too much inventory and all of a sudden you're like i <laughs> yep. can't move i'm like oh my <laughs> god and you gotta pick <laughs> right. that you can eat the really you good shit throw the crap away really good sword. that yeah. that that mechanic has just always been oh my gee my goodness i remember when i first played playing uh i think it was elden ring or whatever uh -huh. i didn't even understand like the um if you put on heavier gear, your roll speed was crap. Mm -hmm. and how far you? Oh man, when I actually put on some lighter gear and I was diving across the screen like a half a mile, I was like, "Oh my god, this is so <laughs> much better!" No wonder I couldn't, I, I couldn't dodge anything. I was moving like a freaking snail. Yeah, that like, that's uh, interesting because from a Dark Souls background, I that's a Dark Souls mechanic that's been around since Demon Souls. Mm -hmm. I, I started playing Elden Ring. I'm naked because that's the fastest to be you know <laughs> pick a big big sword heavy weapon and i can wield it if i don't wear armor <laughs> well, you have real life to, to intimidate my enemies but not in games <laughs> that's funny you mentioned that because it, it is i never really sat and thought about it before but that is the one game mechanic i wish i could get rid of is the the carrying limit like being over encumbered or whatever it goes back to resident evil remember you just had a certain amount of slots to carry stuff and like item management like i don't care if it's realistic or whatever it's not fun there's nothing fun about that it doesn't make the game more interesting or more challenging it just it just flat out sucks it and you need your so stuff much. in resident evil yeah you throw away yeah. your bullets your herbs what are you nuts yeah. What and you, like, you, what are you supposed to throw with your ink ribbons? What are yeah. we throwing away here, guys? My knife. And first person shooters None of this can go. Yeah, like Call of Duty, you get you, you can carry two guns, right? Or whatever, uh, whatever it you is. You know what game yeah. you guys got me thinking yeah. of? Stardew mm -hmm. Valley. When you first start the game, and you only <laughs> yeah. have that no one inventory. Yep. <laughs> that is uh, brutal. Yeah. I'm like, all right, I'm grinding for two thousand dollars. I'll buy the bag, and then we start the game. Yeah, you can't go in the mines without that bag, dude. Yeah, like you uh, know, you, you got to put a Your box pain. at the start of the mine, and yeah, <laughs> yeah, ridiculous. It, it just it doesn't add anything, and I just whatever goes through a developer's mind where they're like, yeah, that'll be good, that'll be uh, that'll add a twist or add some challenge. It's just frustrating. Back back in the day, you got to give them, got to like give them leeway because like it was all new, nobody knew what they're doing, and like they're trying new stuff, and mm -hmm. you know, as someone who likes rpgs especially you kind of yeah. have to go into old especially old rpgs like i just started playing ultima again yeah and i haven't played those games in forever and i'm like oh my god you have to have reagents to cast all your spells in this game <laughs> like it's not just like magic power yeah. and potions and shit it's like you need to have like eye of newt and sage's <laughs> bushel to peck to heal yourself or whatever i'm um, like oh my god so i have to constantly make sure i like look make sure i got all my stuff mm -hmm. and blah, blah 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 it's just like holy crap dude yeah mechanic uh, that i think is brilliant that games don't use these days mm -hmm. and that is perma break for weapons so weapons have like a repair system and if you don't repair them in time they break and then you lose your weapon for the game mm -hmm. i i generally love that yeah, uh, what Dark I, Cloud I, I, did it really well. You could get the Zelda best does it, the uh, game break it. Yeah, Breath of the Wild did it. I forget if the uh, Tears of the Kingdom. Does it Tears of the it. Kingdom did it well because the yeah. way Tears of the Kingdom worked is it you break your weapons, but you're constantly finding more. And I I mm -hmm. never ran out of weapons in that game. Mm -hmm. My inventory was always full of items to rebuild them in different ways. And yeah, I was finding that I never going into a battle where i'm like oh i've got no swords left it was always yeah. fine and different things like that and you can yeah, get a weapon that it doesn't break and you just have to charge it up it forces you to play different and it makes like every part of the game a little bit different because of because uh, of that mechanic yeah and it, it forces you to, to learn the weapons because you haven't just mm -hmm. got this one sword that you do the whole game with mm -hmm. yeah i agree with that i dig that too what do you got um, next yeah real quick so uh, I got one more Lego game. I don't have it's on PS4, but I have it for the Switch. Uh, it's Lego Incredibles, which is a another 
very very cool uh it's probably the most disney of all the uh of all the lego games and it's funny the discrepancy between playstation 2 incredibles and what they finally accomplished with this one like this mm-hmm. is like the game it should have been should have been yeah it's funny how you can go you know that big of a jump in time and like you're fine they finally got it right with this one and a, another example of like it took you know the uh who does this one it's i know it's wb games uh is it traveler's tales who does the lego games but it took that studio to find to take a great property and turn it into a really good game and i think what incredibles is good it, it's a good example of like that company knows how to take what's special about a property and really capitalize on it and really capture the charm of it and the magic of it like they know what makes Marvel special, so they made a good Lego game. They know what makes Star Wars special, so they made a good Lego game out of it because it really just got to the heart of it. Uh, which is funny that you know that outside perspective could catch it, capture it, and, but the Disney Studios. Um, well, they'll, Disney they'll, they've, I'm assuming it's the same people that made the Lego Movie and Lego Batman and all that other stuff. Because yeah. I mean, they definitely are smart. Whoever's running that yeah. over there, they're yeah. great. What they do for sure. Yeah. Like yeah, you said, they yeah. have like a charm to them. They have like a certain attitude or a vibe that going on. They know exactly they, what they make money like too. It. They sell and make money. There was nineteen Lego games on the PS3, yeah. and there's even more on the PS4. Like you know, they're doing something right. Yeah, I guess that's you know people. I, I know like professional reviewers and stuff uh, kind of lament like, "Oh, here's another Lego game." I've never been flat out disappointed with with any of them. Like they're always a good time and they're always fun to play. I believe we get one every wanna... six months, right? That's how the release cycles are on Lego games. What's that? We get one every six months. Yeah. That's yeah. how the Lego cycle games yeah, are. And they sell. They're doing something right. Yeah. And, yeah. If, and if you want a game that's kind of fun to play and with a, with a mm-hmm. kid or a younger mm-hmm. person, too, they're fantastic games, man. Like, uh, and you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's just good to have games that dads can play with their sons or, you know, vice versa yeah. or whatever, or with their daughters. Yeah. And, stuff, and you don't have to worry about you know, modern day gaming, you know, people gore and swearing and all the crazy stuff. Like, you know, like I cannot believe how much swearing is in Final Fantasy Rebirth and how much and stuff. I'm like, why is there? I don't remember Final Fantasy seven having tons of swears in it. Maybe I'm wrong, but it certainly does now. Wow, that's interesting. And I don't have a problem with swearing, but when it's distracting, like when it's it's calling attention to itself, that is weird. I don't. It's not, it's, I don't have a problem with swearing, but it doesn't belong there. It's like yeah, it's like going to see a Shakespearean play, and they're like, "Thy fucketh, fuck you," with <laughs> like Lady Gwyneth. Yeah. Like, what the heck? That doesn't seem right at all. <laughs> like I'm not. I don't mind. I swear quite often. I do, but it just this doesn't seem like the place. It'd be like playing Kingdom Hearts, and they start dropping f bombs. Right. Precisely. You're just like, what vibe is this? This is weird. <laughs> when did this happen? We've gone to the Grand Theft Auto world. <laughs> okay, in that game, that would be awesome. That would be, it was, <laughs> you know, you know what I mean. Like, I could see that. I, oh man, I wish I could do a good Donald. You need Duck to be fifteen <laughs> years or older to enter this world. <laughs> oh, just yeah, I don't know. Um, that's my whole point. It's like I think it's good, like family entertainment, like is like important mm-hmm. like it needs to be a thing like you know I, you have to look at it from people who like i can't play you couldn't play dead space with your kid mm-hmm. you play lego star wars all day not have a problem it comes and down to be the fun for both movies of you, you want both to have fun of the kids as well it's no different to that and you know what yeah good but it's is... also not barney is what i'm saying you could play that and still have fun it's like a good game for both people is what i'm trying to say like and know. all people too like uh you know you can get people that don't especially like video games like you know a lego game is something you could bring your girlfriend in and she would exactly. could hop in and play it it's good local multiplayer too you know which is kind of a genre something we don't get very often uh exactly. anymore is Not local anymore. multiplayer couch co-op oh. is, a, is is my favorite type of gaming my yeah. fondest memories of video games are always playing with somebody else Two controllers for a reason because game went and played <laughs> a friend. Dude, it's just always, always more fun. Like fighting games mm-hmm. would suck without friends. They're yeah. not fun. They're not fun. I don't want to go online and get smashed because I don't want to have to sit there and grind for six months just to have fun. You know? Yeah. 
I don't know, but it's fun hanging out with your friends and talking smack and beating each other. And then like, yeah, like that's good stuff. I don't know. That's interesting. Yeah. Fighting games are the one thing that never translated to online play for me. Like, you know, playing uh, first person shooters online. That's fine. That's fun. But -hmm. there's something about doing a a fighting game, like a, a Mortal Kombat or a Street Fighter online, where it's like that social aspect take not being there takes all the fun out of it. Yeah. I, I, but in the arcade was awesome or playing mm-hmm. with your buddies and you know taking turns like my fun we used to what we used to do is um we'd always play tekken and we'd do team battle mode we'd all pick eight people a piece mm-hmm. and we just have fights and like you just take turns going yeah. through it and like oh man i love that so much and that's like one of my biggest things i don't like about modern fighting games they all took out team battle mode it's like yeah. not a thing it's again just yeah. removed it from the games i'm just like why how hard is this feature to put in there where I can just do this little eight? Rear? I love that. And it's just it's not there. And I like, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's back in Tekken 8. I have no idea. But um, I they, they think they bring like Tekken bowling back or Tekken volleyball or something mm-hmm. like that. I don't remember. They're bringing some stuff about the old Tekken back. <laughs> but I don't know. Like even still, it's like $70 for the game. And then you know, the season pass. And then if you want to play Eddie Gordo, it's an extra 10 bucks. I'm like, dude. That's what I hate. Like, Eddie Gordo plays all the characters. characters. You unlock them and you earn them. And you feel good when you unlock them. And it I gives you an incentive even... to replay the game. So not only, like, I heard, I have, I don't own it, but, like, I've heard that Eddie Gordo is a DLC character you have to pay for. Mm-hmm. And not only... You have to pay for him if you want to play with him, right? But if you want to practice against him in like practice mode to learn, like to fight against him to get good, like because other people are, you have to pay to even do that. You have to buy the character to be able to even practice against the character. And this is on I top of buying the game up. that's full price. Right that's $70. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like fighting games are like some sort of like rich man's game now. <laughs> It's like you have to be like you're like out of the gate in for like two hundred bucks, like seventy dollars, yeah. and then the season pass, and then God forbid you want a nice arcade stick, you're looking at two to four hundred bucks to play. So it's like, I mean, if you want a nice one, you can get cheaper ones. But you don't have to buy But come on, it's like uh, golf or something where it's the it, it, yeah, it, just a flat out expensive uh, sport to play. Yeah, like hockey, um, yeah, everything right. lately. And some of these iRacing setups are like twenty thousand dollars, and they're more sophisticated than people's cars. <laughs> but right. if that's what you're into, then that's what you're into. There's a cycling online scene like that, and people buy like ten thousand dollar bikes to play online cycling. Crazy, but there's a community out there for it. It's funny, is that's what I liked about VR is you kind of do all that stuff without the investment of like needing to get like a big flight sim set up in a control stick and everything like it was just a you know you put on the vr helmet and it creates that environment for you i want more um i i want vr to like bring back more um light gun games i don't know why yeah. they don't just port all the light gun games to vr put all the time crisis games in there put all the house of the deads mm-hmm. in there i don't understand why they don't do that that would be an immediate reason for like a whole group of people who like because right now light guns are kind of dead Unless you get like those, you know, there's the TV things. Yeah, TV. And, yeah. And see, there's ways to play, but I, none of them are really that great. But, you know, throw on the VR helmet. Like you know, it would be, you know, there's plenty of games that are like that already. They mm-hmm. have tons of like on rail shooting games on the VR. I'm just like no shortage of those games. Mm-hmm. But I'm just saying, I wish they would, the actual version of Bring Back Virtual Cop, Bring Back all these games that yeah. these people like. Port them all to VR and release them, and uh, I think that would make actually get some people to buy VR. Or even I never understood what I never understood either is like, especially like uh, with the controllers and stuff. Like, why can't they just use that technology to as the light gun, and you don't even need the VR? Like, why can't you just get the right. VR controllers and a camera? And yeah, the camera could pick up all the and, yeah. and port the games that way and just play them on a flat screen. Like you could I do it know. 15 years ago. Why can't we do it today? <laughs> <sighs> so dumb, dude. Get so anything dumb. else to show us off today, James? Got a few. Well, now it's funny we're talking about VR. Um, so I've got one more. Uh, no, I've got a couple. I've got another Marvel game, real quick. Uh, I'm bringing this one up because it's Iron Man oh. VR. 
which I think is awesome. cool because it's kind of like a ride. You know, it's uh, again, Marvel is it, Disney owns it, but it's not Disney, Disney. But this, I like this game a lot because it feels like, I mean, it's like being in a simulator. It's, it's very, sick. very cool game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's really actually, clever how they use the hands on the suits to fly because mm-hmm. you, 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 you aim, you fly with your hands in that game. Mm-hmm. Like you have jets that come out of your hands and you like use the controllers and you can point them around and fly in different directions. It is, it feels very natural. You like literally like, oh yeah, cool. I'm Iron Man. <laughs> it is awesome, dude. Well, and it does what like a great Disney ride uh, does. It makes it brings you into the world. It makes you feel like you're a part of it. Like when, if you if you ride, uh, you know, Star Tours or whatever at, at Disney World, or you know, you go on um, uh, Peter Pan or whatever you know the rides are, you feel like you're a part of it. That's what makes it magical. And this, you're like you're in the world for sure. Like you're you're this iconic character. You're playing the role. Uh, it's like transformative or something like that. It's very very cool game um yeah one of my favorite vr games and it's a healthy it's i mean it's not like you know oblivion skyrim length but it's it's a healthy experience uh for a vr game uh, which i like a lot one of the best games on the vr for sure yeah another one uh so this is vr and just uh you can play regular too but uh i love star wars squadrons uh, I was going to say my other two favorites are the Star Wars games. Yeah, <laughs> I like that one and the Vader one as well. Vader is great too. Uh, I brought yeah. Squadrons up because this feels like a ride again. It feels like you know you're in the cockpit of uh, an X-wing and it gets to it, you to yeah. If you get motion sickness, that is not the game for you. <laughs> no, not Let at me all. Because that is full 360. Mm-hmm. You're in a spaceship and you're flying around in outer space and like you can move pretty quickly in that game. So. I I loved it. Mm-hmm. Just thinking about it. I loved it. But if I'm just if because if that's so I you know I as someone who's a VR enthusiast I can't tell you mm-hmm. how sick I am. People are like I can't play those games. You make me sick. I'm like oh mm-hmm. yeah okay. You're uh like can you go on boats? Can you ride in cars? Are you four? <laughs> like you have the stomach of a, like a toddler. Come on man. Like yeah, it probably does make you feel sick. Play it for a couple hours and get over it, you baby. <laughs> that's all right. That's uh, that's pretty much my attitude towards that question. I've been I've first, been out in the water. Not the first before, thousand times man. I heard it, but the last second thousand times I heard it, I've been like, yeah, just all right. Yeah, I'm a big uh, big VR fan, and uh, the this and Iron Man are, are two of my favorites. But uh, you know, I think VR was. I think I was going through a lull at the time of like in my video game fandom, where it's like I was playing stuff, but I wasn't like enamored with the hobby like I used to be. And then mm-hmm. VR came along. I got a PSVR, and it like threw me in back into that world big time. Yeah, it got it me exciting, excited yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. It was like something different, something unique, something complete that I just hadn't experienced before. So I, I credit VR a whole lot with like you know reigniting my obsession with uh, with video games. It's uh, just phenomenal. And like anybody, you know, I, I get my I put my dad with a VR headset. And same thing. It's just like blown away by just something you never thought you'd experience, and just the uh, the physicality of it, the immersion, and and all that. Like it's just, uh, I mean, it, I know it becomes expect- like um, physically more comfortable. Yeah, I think that's going to be a huge thing. Like once mm-hmm. once the VR helmet isn't this giant helmet with a big wire. And it's literally mm-hmm. like a pair of swimming goggles. Yeah, that you just yep. pop on, and it's like real lightweight. It doesn't cover your whole face. Doesn't mm-hmm. mess up your hair. Doesn't make you all sweaty. Doesn't leave giant <laughs> suction cup rings on your freaking face. Yeah. Like the whole the experience right now is weird from your average mm-hmm. person. If you're into games, you don't care. You're gonna have a blast. Yeah. I, I don't care. But like, you know, it, it's it's different. So I just feel like once it's once it becomes really convenient, uh, that's when it'll be like more popular. Yeah, it's funny. I, I the first time my brother played it, he played uh, Battlezone on uh, PSVR. And uh, playing that on my Atari good. Mini 400, the actual. No, I know. Yeah. Same. Um, but he, I remember he took the headset off, and he was like, "I don't want to come back to the real world." Like he's like, "I just want to live inside this virtual headset thing." And uh, I totally get what he means. Like it's just very, uh, just addictive. It's like a drug or, or something like that. It's just very. You know, if you're into it and you buy mm-hmm. into it, like you can uh, just become completely absorbing uh, being in these different worlds. You got me thinking so of that Apple headset and there's people living in those with that world. Yeah. 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 
Well, the, the, what's scary is when they start crossing that with the MMOs. So once mm -hmm. you have like World of Warcraft plus VR, once you have, I mean, they already have stuff like that, but like there will be people like who said, like you said, will prefer to live in that world than the real world. And there will be mm -hmm. people who literally will like starve to death because they won't stop playing. That will right. happen. That happens already. There are people who yeah. die in internet cafes in China just from playing online games because they won't stop playing. And, right. and they're in reality and they won't stop. They die. Yay. People so losing their to... jobs and relationships and all sorts of stuff. Well, I've, this is a huge thing I've tried to explain to people too is that like if your real life sucks <laughs> and your online life is awesome, where are you going to want to be? So if your real life you're poor, but in your online game you're a rich person, Hmm. In mm -hmm. real life, if no, you have no power and no one respects you, but in the game, everyone thinks you're the man and everyone respects you. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's like you have no friends in real life. You have tons of friends online. You have no friends. It's like if your real life is in every way mm -hmm. comparably worse than your online life, this is when it becomes a problem. You're nobody, people, and then you go online people, and you're respected. Yeah. And everyone knows who you are and Correct. you feel welcomed. And, yeah. yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's addicting human. for. Oh, yeah, it's and and also like human beings, like we are like a tribal species, mm -hmm. and we all yearn to be part of a community or a group. No one wants to be alone, regardless of how cool you. Yeah, I'm a lone wolf. I'm a one man wolf pack. I don't need nobody. No, fuck you. Everybody needs somebody. Everybody wants to be part of that. So like, naturally, like if you're getting that in this game world, and, and in real life, no one gives a shit about you. Mm -hmm. And you have no friends and nobody cares. Like you see what I'm saying? Like it's it, it it's like obviously this is what's gonna happen. So I'm, I'm scared people. of the VR future and for that regard. I am scared for some people because I know yeah. it's gonna ruin some people's lives. But well, you think about people who are, you know, have a hard time talking to others or are shy or like antisocial or just all socially awkward and, and all that kind of stuff, and they don't do good in groups, but online they flourish, their personalities come out, they can express themselves mm -hmm. better and, and all they're that not insecure stuff. about how they look yeah, or they yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. You, people, it, you can look however you want on the internet. Mm -hmm. And if you're great at something, like, like you feel you feel uh, needed and wanted. Like that's another mm -hmm. thing people like that underestimate. Like people need, at least men. I don't know about women, but dudes. Like we like need to feel useful. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you feel useless, that's when like guys off themselves because they're like, "Well, what the fuck? I got nothing yeah. else to do." Like it's like so like in a game, if you're like the best rogue and work or you know people like everybody wants you that feels good because it's like we need someone to do a dungeon can you come please you know that you <laughs> feel you feel needed you feel wanted you feel good and then in real life most people are like ew just get away from me gross <laughs> whatever it is <laughs> it's just guys, like we've hit the two and a half hour mark i think we might no, call let, that one a show no pull up a couch let's start we're gonna get we're, we're gonna you on, man. thanks so much for Coming in, sharing your collection. And Thanks, and man. Disney games are two and a half hours of us. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, pleasure. It's uh, like I said, I'm up at my parents' house and it's boring and I got nothing to do tonight. So, um, and guys, yeah, I've linked James' pleasure. Instagram below. Be sure to go and give him a follow. Even if you're not into <laughs> Disney World, it is really awesome to see you walking around posting photos of hot dogs at Disney World. It's really cool. <laughs> And you can well, send him a message, talk about Disney games. I'm sure he'll be happy to chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, I, I talk about Disney a lot, but I don't get a chance to talk about Disney games a lot. So uh, yeah, just please hit me up, reach out, send me messages. If you go to Disney a lot, uh, let me know. And uh, I'm always meeting people in the parks and uh, grabbing selfies and all that kind of stuff. So be sure to say hi in, in whatever way you want. Awesome. Oh, that's awesome. Thanks for coming on, man. That was a lot of fun. Cool. I appreciate you guys so much. Thanks for having me. That yeah, was awesome. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. See you guys. Have a nice night, guys. <laughs> Bye. You found the good